You are about to witness history in the making. Hello, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to the Pop Culture Gamers podcast. It's been a little while, but we're back with uh, show number 151, broken that magic 150 number finally. Uh, we're on a downhill uh, slope to 200. My name's Hayden. As always, I'm here with Steve. Hi, Steve. How are you doing? How are you doing? Yeah, like, okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah I'm fine. Yeah. So what what's uh, been you were you in the last few weeks since did, we last I, recorded? I, I I don't know. Um, I think it's just another vortex of the time displacement. I'm not sure really what I've been doing. <clears throat> um, Played a lot of Destiny, I've noticed. Um, I had leading up to the um, new season, which we'll have a brief talk about. Not much, because I haven't really I haven't played much this week. Um, yeah, I've uh, been watching a few more movies, to be fair. Um, Soundtrack-wise, what about to Yeah, so I had an email from, who was it? I'll tell you who it was, a minute. Let me look at it. From Intrana, and they do the extended CDs for, for, for movies and that. All right, yeah. So I now have this one. I saw you pick that one up. It's, I literally, I got the email late at night, so I purchased it. It's it's because obviously the album I have is just eight tracks, I think, something like that. Mm. Really nice to have that. It even has the rock track from the bus. <laughs> you know what I mean? I do, yeah. And uh, yeah, so I am only now one short, I think, in the collection. Although there's a couple of lights have extended um, two CDs, but there's some of the, my generation's a bit rare at the minute. I might get a repress and Nemesis. Other than that, the first contact, which I picked up recently as well, with the extended two CDs on that. And going downwards from there, they're all two CDs now, down to um, the motion picture. But you've and got then, all of the movies already, haven't you? Well, I've had, I've got my vinyl collection, obviously. Yeah. But but other, well, yeah, my um, stock of motion picture is um, I've got two or three copies of that, including the extended album. But obviously, I think even Star Trek Five, you know, that album came out very minimalistic. But I have the two CD version with all the extra tracks that were never released. So all the Kirk and Spock ones are nearly there with. With all of those, <clears throat> just a mm. just a couple to twist and get. Also, there's something else from La La Land I picked on Amazon, which um, is a bit of a pain because it, it, I hate. This is the thing, right? We, you know, I say we're not buying on. We have to go down the CD route, and occasionally you get your jewel cases a bit poorly broken. Yes. Um, I don't know whether I'm just might as well just order some if you can get them. Um, you know, just to replace them. It's more hassle than it's worth to try and get a jewel case out of a company, especially when they're thousands of miles away. Yeah. So the other one is that one. Kingsman. Kingsman, which I was sitting on for quite a while. Um, and I was trying to listen to it on Amazon or One Music Way, but they don't have them on there much, much now. They just have one track. So I'm going to have to pick that up. And the last thing the soundtrack is something that's, I think, on its 50th anniversary this year. And that is The Wicker Man, which is a big favourite of mine. I don't know if it's one of yours or not. No, it's not one that I'm overly bothered about. <clears throat> Just a very British movie, I think. <laughs> and it's a bit mm. crazy, but I, I love it, yeah. Um, 
regarding Blu-rays and that now. Not sure yet, I'll send you a picture at some point. There's you know the Vault Blu-rays 4K that come out occasionally? They're yeah. called the Vault. And they're slightly extra special, aren't they, in some shape or form? The Rod and Brew Vaults. Yeah. Um they have extra bits and pieces in them there and stuff in there. Well, Jaws comes out Monday. <laughs> on that and it's nice prints and stuff with it mm. and on the flip side of a movie you don't really you're not keen on which is coming to blu-ray 4k i think july and i think i did it i had the email early but um they sold out on the still working Zabby, and that will be jaws too yeah again it's released uh, i know you're not a big fan no, because my view's always been, oh, there's a shark in the water, it's killing people, don't go in the water, and the problem solved. But that's got to be a northern thing, I reckon. <laughs> so. But, yeah, no, the first two movies are the, the, the better two. They went a bit down here after that. Mm. Um, and I'm still waiting from eBay months ago. I pre-ordered the Picard 3, season 3 um, soundtrack. Oh, is that on there now? Um, I, 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 yeah, it's around. Not hard to get. It's hard to get hold of, mind you. But I'm waiting for it to get to the, the store I'm getting it from. They still haven't had received them yet. Yeah. Because uh, I've, I've been waiting for that to. Uh, well, so actually, uh, Picard season two. Oh no, have I got season two? I think I might have season two, but I definitely wanted uh, season three. Season three is the only one you need, I think, really. No, I like the, the music from the other ones is good as well. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I've messaged him on eBay, so I'm waiting for a reply back. He hasn't replied back yet, so we'll see. I mean, yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah, we'll, we'll come to fruition at some point. Um, busy cutting the grass. The sun's nice. So busy out in the garden. I don't know about yourself. Have you, I mean, I hate gardening, but we've had to get it cut. Yeah, I've been uh, doing uh, gardening because we did have a um, someone who was cutting our lawn but for a few different reasons we've um, gone back to cutting our own <laughs> as it were mm -hmm. uh, so I had to get a lawnmower yeah um, and my son wanted to uh, earn some extra pocket money so I thought well you know say like, surprised you didn't go for a robot lawnmower well I wanted my to keep, my mister keeps hammering me about it thinking, yeah but no no it's not a point <laughs> I, I wanted to, but uh, she wasn't keen. However, what we might be doing is astroturf in one of the lords. Mm. Um, but not until next year, because we've got a lot of um, costs at the moment, because Adam's uh, doing mm. his GCSEs. So we're yes, two weeks yeah. down. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we've been getting him some extra lessons uh, for that as well so, and they're uh, like to help push him forward yeah yeah just for a little bit of you know any last questions that you want to sort of ask before you go into your exam but it's like 35 pound an hour mm. yeah <laughs> exactly it's a lot mm. of money i mean if you can pull if you can pull it out of the bag it'd be well worth it obviously you know, so. yeah yeah exactly you know we want to give him every every chance that we can but it's crippling us in terms of cost mm -hmm. um i've got a well a couple of purchases first one one well one of two that arrived today mm -hmm. and i got this for 21 pounds something mm -hmm. and if you don't have it i think you will be going on to ebay and getting it 21 pound what was that then <clears throat> yes i've been looking for that for donkeys that is on ebay now uh, uh, sorry, uh, amazon now 21 quid I'll get you the link. So this is the 4K version of the movie with the vinyl. Mm. Um, it's on offer, on offer at the moment because, uh, well, it says that the normal price of that is 30. But when you look at Doctor Who and the Daleks, oh, sorry, a Daleks invasion of Earth, that's 60 quid. Well, there's no way I'm paying 60 quid for that. However, I did get this. Hmm which is the 4K version of the movie uh, in a steel book for £16 off Amazon, which I didn't think was bad at all. 
<clears throat> I'm just having a look on there now, I'm just scrolling as you're talking, because I can't find it there. But of course, obviously, it's a Peter Cushing Doctor Who. But I didn't mind those, apart from they actually called them Doctor Who on the actual show, as as opposed to The Doctor. Yeah, because I've got Doctor Who series one and two with Murray Gold, which was David Tennant's mm. best time, should we say? Yeah. Um, so I've got those two because I used to like the uh, original Peter Cushing um, movies. Mm. I know that they don't follow the same canon as the TV series, but you know it was something a bit different, wasn't it? It's another variation. Be interested to see how Doctor Who's going to be with going your know, BBC going in with Disney mm. for the new season. Yeah, I, uh, think that's, I think the Disney side just for the Yanks, though, isn't it? No, it's for everybody. Is it? Oh, okay. Um, and then, of course, I also got uh, Strange New Worlds. Uh, I got the <coughs> 4K Blu-ray Steelbook for mm-hmm. that, which is uh, very nice. Um, and I updated my Steam Deck. Oh, okay. Yes, I heard about that. Yeah, so I put a one terabyte hard drive into the Steel Deck, in the uh, um, Steam Deck, mm-hmm. um, which has made a massive amount of difference because. I hadn't actually realised, I thought I'd put a 512 um, gigabyte uh, SD card Mm -hmm. in, and I hadn't. I'd only put in a 256, which probably explains why things were a little bit tight. But very easy to do. I did a YouTube video on how to uh, do that as well. Um, I've also been messing about with a bit of emulation on the Steam Deck and getting that working, been playing things like SSX from the PlayStation 2 on the uh, on the Steam Deck, which is great. Uh, I used to love playing SSX and SSX Tricky and all of that. Yeah, Ridge like Racer, it, yeah. you know, the original Ridge Racer from the PlayStation and uh, all of that, absolutely great, plays them no problems at all. Uh, so, yeah, been doing that and um played a couple of games as well uh, the one that i think you'll be interested in the most is star trek resurgence oh yeah i've seen you've been posting about that yeah i've uh, played a few well i've done a couple of uh you know like let's play so that people can follow along the story if they want to mm-hmm. uh, but we'll talk about that later on yes Okay, so Steve, anything else you want to say for the intro, or shall we uh, move no, on to let's the next bit? Move on. All right, well, we'll move on to gaming this week. No longer a dream, but a reality. All right, so gaming this week, and we got <sighs> a few bits of news on uh, for us here. So, for those of you who are fellow Steam Deck owners, uh, Proton has been upgraded to version 8 and it's got loads and loads of bug fixes and lots of uh, bug fixes uh, for the Steam Deck generally as well as specific games. But uh, every game now playable on the Steam Deck using uh, Proton 8, the new ones, are Forspoken, Samurai Maiden, Dead Space, that's a 2023 version because there was evidently some issues with it before. Uh, Creativeverse, Noah 2 Complete Edition, One Piece Pirate Warriors 4, uh, Atlia uh, Marui, Atlia Lai and uh, Sully, and Atlia Sophie, The Alchemist and the Mystery Box, uh, Book DX, Blue Reflection, uh, Atlia uh, Rora, The Alchemist of Arlen DX, Disney Dreamlight Valley, Romance of Three Kingdoms uh, uh, 14, Together Island, Warriors uh, Orichi 3 Ultimate Definitive Edition, Exceed, Gun Bullet Children, Gun Grave Gore, and uh, Chex Quest HD. So if any of those are games that uh, you quite like to play, 
uh, but being unable to on your Steam Deck, they're now working. So just make sure you've got uh, Proton uh, version 8 on there. I did actually forget to say as well, over the last few weeks, I've been doing a few uh, Steam Deck games. So I've been customising my Steam Deck. So if you're really into wanting to get your Steam Deck to be more customised, have a look at some of the ones that I've done because um, I've, you, I've done a video on uh, the uh, Cryo utilities, which speeds up your Steam Deck um, an awful lot. And also on the, um, I forgot what it was called, Decky Loader, that was it. Yeah, so I've also been uh, doing some stuff with Decky Loader and I did a video on that. And that allows you to customise loads of different aspects of your Steam Deck and uh, make the screen more vibrant as if it's like a, um, a QLED sort of screen. So, the, you know, there's a few different things on there. Just have a look at the, uh, the Pop Culture Gamers uh, YouTube channel and you'll be able to see everything on that. Um, Steam Deck Client for PC has been updated as well with lots of new improvements. Um, so this is a Steam Deck Client beta uh, and there's been some big changes uh, in the update, a lot of which is not immediately visible. It's background stuff, but much of work has gone into changing how uh, code across the desktop client, big picture mode and Steam Deck all operate. These chain changes also mean it's quicker to implement an iteration, iteration of new features, um, one of which is the new network local transfer, um, which ships simultaneously in the Steam Deck client and uh, the Steam client as well. So you can actually download a game that you've already got on your PC on your Steam Deck. Uh, there's targeted visual and usability improvements. There's uh, the in-game overlay, uh, originally created to be a quick way of chatting with friends or check your own gap on game-related questions or content as a brand new interface. There's a new toolbar that gives you access to uh, anything that you might need in the middle of a game. Um, there's the game overlay as well, which is your one-stop shop to see what's going on uh, with the game since you last played it. There's a new notes app so that you can uh, make notes and it'll leave a sticker on the screen uh, so that you can um, you know, remind yourself of something you have to do at a specific point or cross off collectibles, that sort of thing, if you want to put that on screen. There's also the ability to uh, pin windows from the overlay so that they can appear on top of games as well. A uh, new screenshot manager, there's uh, technical work in the update that also makes it possible to enable hardware acceleration on Macs and Linux versions of Steam. So lots and lots of changes um, if you're a Not PC good. gamer. All for the good, mind you. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think that uh, Valve, have, when you look at the original version of Steam to what it is now, it's massively different. Absolutely, Absolutely massively different. <laughs> but it uh, it has to evolve, you know, to keep up to date with everything else that's uh, sort of, you know, PC related, as it were. Mm. And I don't know if you've seen this about uh, Microsoft's also uh, battling Xbox achievement spam games. I think all of this came from that uh, one where there was a cat and you just watched it for 20 minutes on screen and then it gave you a thousand gamer score. <coughs> not even I am not that sad. No, I have it? not got no, I have not got that at all. And I won't be putting that on uh, the system. Um, I do like, uh, you know, quick and easy achievement games. Lovely, doesn't it? <laughs> Who cares? Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, it, it's just a bit of fun yeah. sort of thing. Uh, it's it's nothing to be too serious about, but um, I do prefer games that don't necessarily unlock within like two minutes. <coughs> yes, I do yeah. play those as well, but I also keep playing beyond them. So, uh, for example, uh, I, well, uh, I've got a good relationship with the uh, with a video game publisher now who uh sends me uh you know games to 
uh, review on a regular basis. You, uh, I'll, I'll rather do a YouTube video uh, in relation to it about the achievements. So uh, I had a couple of games from them, like the latest one was uh, Danger Gazers, which is um, a sort of like rogue light uh, shooter, as it were, um, kind of kind of like um, a sort of Western-ish version, with Aliens version of Bomberman, but with shooting. You know, it's mm. a twin stick sort of uh, affair with a shooter. They also did uh, things like the uh, the X-Crawlers, which I've uh, done. A, uh, I sent you a game as well, a code for one of the one of the games when they sent me a couple of copies um but you I don't, I don't think you've ever played it have you i've that definitely seen it even seen the code i put it in chat it was about ah. a month or so ago and you said that you were going to install it <laughs> oh my ass will probably wind up then okay i need to go back and look yet to just yeah yeah so i don't mind those sort of games at all and you know things like ballatron oceans and uh some other ones that are from uh, Desert Water Games, who were mm. the provider, you know, the the one I've got this relationship with now, um, our friends there. Uh, I, I do play their games beyond just doing the achievements. Mm. And there have been some good games that they've uh, produced some enjoyable, like shooters, as a, like an asteroids esque sort of one um, that they've done, which I really enjoyed as well. I can't remember; it was something anomaly. Um, I can't remember the exact title of it though, going off the top of my head. There is a video on our YouTube channel uh, of how to get all of the achievements on that. And plus the fact that one of those uh, companies that will also update the achievements to 5,000. Oh, okay, that's handy. Yeah. Especially for, yeah. Your, for your, um, your little uh, fix, shall we say? Yeah, well, I'm on a downhill run to 700,000 gamer score this year. Oh, yeah, my heart bleeds. <laughs> so yeah but you know um don't mind that sort of stuff but yeah evidently microsoft is uh battling it against these uh you know very super easy ones mm. uh basically so in an effort to stem the tide uh of uh, these super easy games where you don't have any input at all uh, and prevent them from flooding the marketplace because uh, I've noticed that uh, the PlayStation Store is full of this sort of stuff as well. Um, I've deliberately bought a couple just to uh, put on YouTube so I can, you know, just demonstrate how stupid mm. they are, like uh, the Jumping Hamburger, what? for example. <laughs> yeah, where, okay. I'm not kidding you, your only interaction that you need to do is hold down the um, jump button just don't move your finger off it, just hold it. And a hamburger jumps up and down on a table, this mm. cartoonish hamburger. And when it gets to 500, you've got a platinum. <laughs> it's, you know, they, they are utterly ridiculous. And there's actually the jumping hamburger turbo and like the jumping banana turbo, which are on the PS5. Mm. And they're the same game but they run twice as fast. Right, okay. So it takes you half the time, because if you actually play it, you'll actually play it for about a minute before, it, or say about two minutes before it's done all of the jumping. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I said, watch our YouTube channel, you'll be able to see it. Because uh, one of the things I was going to do is like the five easiest games on PlayStation, the five easiest games on Xbox. Do you know what I mean? Those mm -hmm. sort of things are get 10,000 gamer score or 10 platinums in an hour. Those sort of challenges. Um, but it's it's utterly they're they're utterly ludicrous because they just uh, you know done and that's it and you're never going to play them again mm. uh you know obviously but i'm obviously <laughs> trying to get a bit of worth out of it by doing a few videos <laughs> about <it. laughs> yeah so anyway um what microsoft has said is unlocking achievements uh in the base game or a content update must represent a thorough explanatory exploration or of or engagement with game content. Essentially, this means that players have to actually accomplish something to get an achievement. Well, uh, that's like well, what you mean, like hitting the A button for the symptoms or whever it was. Well, remember? technically speaking, that, 
technically speaking, that would be an achievement. You know, yeah, there, there, are, there are loads of games like that, aren't there? But um, on top of this, the company has also added three new fail examples, the conditions that will prevent a game from being certified if it meets these. So mm. all achievements can be unlocked within a few minutes of starting a game. So presumably when I say a few, they mean two. Um, so three minute games, here we come. Uh, achievements do not represent a thorough exploration of or engagement with game content. And all achievements can be unlocked without any or minimal user input uh, unless required as part of the core gameplay loop. Mm. So it won't be no, it won't be much more different compared to what it is now. It, it, no, it's not. They're not just trying to iterate something because of that. They're thinking, well, I'm going to make that a statement. So. Well, <coughs> I, th I think that the thing is, is that there was a lot of complaints about this cat game. Mm. because people were buying it and then you know it's like exactly. the achievements you're about the cat game you're about is that the one on the playstation you're talking about the i think it's on simulation. both i think it's, it's on both it's not on it's not the, the new cat game remember it's like a cat simulation where the cat oh no 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 not that game no <laughs> not the one not the one that's in the cyberpunk city because that's coming robots. to xbox surely isn't it apparently yeah it's, it's all right it's not brilliant no, but it's just visually, that's all you look at, isn't it? Yeah, visually it's very nice, but it's a very simple platform puzzler. Yeah, <coughs> I think reality. it's on the Game Pass, apparently, so I've heard, that's why. Yeah, well, to be honest, it was also on um, uh, Plus Premium as well. Yeah. And I think it said, uh, I think Extra as well, and mm -hmm. that was where I played that. But I, I only did one playthrough, and I couldn't be bothered to play it again to get the platform. Yeah, yeah. although you played um, once you away, didn't you? Yeah, it was only about three or four hours something like that if i remember rightly it's a, it's been a while I, I completed it in two sittings mm. um i think if i remember rightly about you know i certainly completed it i think within the first week of it being released um but no no this is just one way it just shows an animal on screen mm. you cannot interact with it and you just wait for the timer to go off and then it gives you an achievement when you've had it on screen. You can look around it, but you can't do anything with it. You don't get... It's like, remember, I think it was um, Alan Wake, do you remember? Yeah. You had to watch the TV show. Oh, yes. TV. Yeah. Same sort of thing, isn't it, really? That um, was, obviously, that was to get an achievement. But yeah, but, but that was part of the gameplay loop, wasn't yeah. it? Because the TV show was tied into the story. Because you, you could sit there and just watch the TV um, and watch the Twilight Zone or whatever it was. I can't remember what they called it now. It was something similar to the Twilight Zone, wasn't it? Something was it called. Deep Deep Falls or something oh, like something, that, wasn't something it? Like, yeah, yeah, something like that. But yeah, that was um, I remember that. Yeah. <clears throat> so anyway, it's going to be interesting how that does affect the uh, the gaming sort of community because I I, th I seriously think some of these uh, you know like super quick games do themselves an injustice because when you actually play them they're actually quite enjoyable it's a bit mm. like uh avatar the the last airbender on the 360 you know everybody bought that played it and then dumped it you know for after a couple of minutes when they got the 1000 yeah. gamer score yeah. but evidently it was a really good game to play i mean i, I remember it was the quickest achievements that i have a uh, uh, 1000 gamer score i ever got it was the first quick one because i borrowed it off my brother-in-law who bought it specifically so he could say he had a game with a thousand gamer score and i said oh, i was thinking about getting that but i don't want to pay the money for for it mm -hmm. because obviously it was quite high so he said oh i'll load it to you so he gave me the disc i put it in and i'm not kidding you i timed it yeah i had a mm -hmm. stopwatch so from a cold boot to having 1,000 gamer score, mm. 42 seconds. <clears throat> Loading from a DVD. Do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. it was so incredibly easy. Um, yeah, but it was supposed to be quite a good game, but I'd never actually played played through, but I'd, I'd heard it was supposed to be good. Uh, but, you know, you, you're driving an ambition goes on a lot of these games but with the indie ones i tend to now 
keep if I quite quite enjoyed it when I where I got up to. It's like mm. um oh, uh, the uh, what I just mentioned from Desert Water Games, um X Crawlers. Mm. It's quite an interesting sort of like little puzzle platformer, as it were. So I don't you know, I don't mind playing that or Ball of Tron Oceans, that's quite a good mm. good one. Um, Deep Space Anomaly, that was the one I was thinking of before. I quite enjoy yeah. doing that as a shooter. Uh, so they produce some good games. It's just that they, ha- you know, they, they do these quick achievements, and I think they probably do themselves an injustice. But um, you know, um, I'll keep promoting the games as long as I keep. <laughs> so anyway, think... can we move on to the next bit of news? I really already want to talk about. Okay, uh, do you want to do the next bit of news, Ed, Steve? So. Yeah, so how I found out about this, I was watching um, one of the YouTube ladies. I haven't watched her for ages. <clears throat> but um, she did a TikTok video and she was watching. There was a PS, PS, there was a PlayStation event that Kat was on. Yeah. And she was, this little TikTok view, she's watching this grass, there's an animal there. I think. And her, her face drops when Metal Gear Solid and Solid Snake comes into the into the frame of the picture she was quite you got to search for it it's, it's hilarious up to the i think it was like you know the cartoon your jaw drops your your tongue rolls out under the floor sort of thing mm. now I, i've heard a lot about this but metal gear solid 3 snake Eater, especially getting a remake titled metal gear solid triangle delta delta, delta thank you yeah um snake eater that's not <clears throat> yeah i'll see it's in there um, although this remake was announced for PlayStation, it's also say, coming to Windows, with PC, and Xbox Series X. Now, the idea is that they're going to bundle in the original two that they brought out, which is I'm looking at my screen at a mock two, so I've got them in my collection already. I, I mean, you've got them as well, have you? Yeah. So the Metal Gear Solid HD collection on the Xbox 360 was back in the day, where you've got uh, Metal Gear Solid One and Two. Um, and they're going to add some ports to that as well in this collection. I'm hoping they would tweak the other two as well because they've never been remastered, have they? No, I don't think so. And I think my memories are about yours and Metal Gear Solid of just playing a demo to, to death off the magazine for the first Metal Gear Solid. Oh, man, did I play it to death? Uh, I, I never actually, I don't think, played the demo, the one of the tanker. Oh, no, I did. Yeah, I played it once, but I thought I don't want to overdo it. It was the one. It was the one that where you get as far as get sneaking into the the camp, and you drop down to where the guys imprisoned. Yeah, uh, I think take you as far as there, uh, and um, yeah, that'd be great. I mean, Metal Gear's had a bit of a bum over the last few years with some of the other ones that have come out. I think I've played. No, I've never completed one of them of late. I don't know about yourself. Um, the last one I did was uh, Metal Gear. What one was um, uh, Keeper Sutherland did the voice acting, didn't he? No, uh, I, I did that one as well, uh, Phantom Pain. Yeah, was Phantom it Phantom Pain? Pain? Take your word for it, I don't think I can see it on my screen. Ground Zeroes was like the cut down version, and then there was mm. Phantom Pain, wasn't there? Because I did two Metal Gear Solid Fives, which I never understood the idea of, but then yeah. he also did that other Metal Gear Solid one where you weren't Snake. I always want to say Pliskin and he's not. Uh, where you... <laughs> I know it's, it's something you want to say, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Where he, um, it wasn't Snake and you went into an alternate universe and you had to survive and build a shelter and stuff like that. It was, on, that uh, it, it was on Game Pass or it came with Games with Gold or something or other like that. Mm. Game game, but yeah, no, um, <clears throat> be interesting to see what that is. Did you, did you say, did you didn't watch the event? Was there any other no. no, I didn't watch the event. Uh, although there was one thing that was interesting. Um, have you seen the images on online about PlayStation? Go on. PlayStation are getting mm. a handheld oh yeah i saw that i thought that might have been a wind up at first i weren't too sure i didn't really look into it much i i showed my son the video and when he saw it he laughed and he said 
That is such a good wind up. Was this from April Fool's Day? <laughs> yeah. And I said, no, this is real. <clears throat> and he was like, I thought that wasn't real. I said, it was, seriously. Mm. And that was totally real. And he watched the video several times. He said, but this is, you know, this is genuine. I was like, yeah, no. And he said, how much is it going to be? If it's oh. just a streaming device, what's it going to be? About 70, 80 quid. Mm. And I said, well, from what I understand, they're talking about 280 quid, not 180 quid. And when you look at it, it looks awful. It looks like somebody has... You know, the, you know like I've played, you know you get your, your phone and you attach it to either side of... Yeah. That those sort of, it looked like one of those, I think, when I remember skipping past it. <clears throat> but yeah, what it looks like is somebody's got a, uh, a dual sense controller, attacked it with an angle grinder, and then put an iPad in the middle. Mm. You know, with some, uh, you know, qu- um, some super glue. That's what it looks like. It looks mm. loving awful. Mm. Um, I just think it's well, <clears throat> it's ridiculous. Um, I can't see how it's going to be. You know, how I, I don't think many people are going to have it. Mm. Uh, because why would why would you have it? Why would no, you have it when you, you got know, Steam, you've got a you got Steam Deck? You've got that's all you want, isn't it? Yeah, well, you can stream to the Steam Deck. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, this other news I wanted to mention that you've not been it there. So out of the blue, dropped this video from Bungie, and I think this was also on the PlayStation one. When Cut and Cade is coming back, yeah, and it went viral. That that video went absolutely mental. Yeah, it's the shape of something, isn't it? Yeah, um, <clears throat> I was watching a, a video stream. Someone I normally watch, and he went, "Not the shape oh. of water, and it's got uh, Cade enjoying." <laughs> no, 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 no. And, uh, and yeah. there's another. It's a good little video I've seen of um, the guy that plays his voice. Nathan Fillion talking about it. With a cup of tea, have you seen that? Yeah, he's such a Oh, mate, guy. I'm so looking forward to I'm so looking forward to seeing that. Whether or not this is going to be as a ghost or, or, or what, I don't know. But it'd be interesting when it's... That's going to no, be... his character's supposed to be alive, is it? I mean, I never understood how he could die anyway. He was a robot. But I, I, I know what I think. I can't really say on this because it, it spoils the end of the original last um, story. <clears throat> but I don't... What I, this is what I'm thinking. Mm. But, yeah, very interesting. But, yeah... The um, my little cave is up there on the on the shelf. I should bring him down now because he's coming back to life. But yeah, good. I mean, all right, Bungie. I've got an affiliation now with with PlayStation, so it was on there first. But um, yeah, all good. Is, yeah, but, but what's it called though? Because it's, it, it's an expansion, isn't it? It's a shape of something. Let me. Have a look. I would remind myself. Now, I wasn't sure if it was an extra add-on. <clears throat> like, yeah, but um, I think it's supposed to be like the new uh, Lightfall sort of thing. Um, but it's not the shape of water. <laughs> it's called the final shape. The final shape, yeah. I knew it was so much shape. Yeah. Um, and I, I, the way that they were talking about it, it sounds like it's going to be the last one. But there is a roadmap to finish at the moment with what's coming out. I think there's more still to come. Doesn't say about the price of it. It'll be another 60 quid. I would have thought. It might, it might say if it's going to be. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we'll learn more. Final it's shape, early days. None of that information's public yet. So the final shape has been um, said to be the final chapter in Destiny Light and Dark, Darkness Saga, which Bungie considers to be everything that's happened so far up to the original game. So, because this season. Or should I say the story and everything else that we've got? This will last until February next year. Mm. What we got, and then after that. <clears throat> but yeah, no, interesting. 
you know, there's a lot of, lot of people, you know, it had come out of the blue. I think that's yeah. probably one of those draw drop moments again. I mean, a couple of things. We just have to wait now for Microsoft to do something like that. Uh, we've got we've got the Starfield event early June, and we've got their own little event coming. Obviously, because there's no the other events are all cancelled now for June. Yeah, no E3. So, no E3, so we'll have to wait and see what they come up with. But I mean, there'll be some things. I mean, we've got a few games coming out, and I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that we're going to see news on Fable. I think that has been hinted. And uh, Hellblade. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, any other news you want to put into this, or do, do you want to put about Netflix? We'll leave it into the movie side, shall we? Uh, we'll leave that until the movie side, do you think? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay, uh, do you want to do new releases? Okay, yeah, new releases we have. May the 30th, we've got Tricky of the Colourful Tales on the Xbox Series X and Xbox One. Company of Heroes on the PlayStation 5 and Series X, also from May the 30th. System Shop for PC on the same month. 1st of June, we have Iranian Odyssey Origin Collection on the Switch and the PC. Killer Frequency on all platforms, June the 1st. Skatebird on the PlayStation 4 and 5. Street Fighter 6, PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, and PlayStation 4 PC for the 2nd of June. Super Mega Baseball 4 on all platforms. We Love Kamatra Re Roll and Re Roll Reverse on all platforms come um, June the 2nd. The big one, I think, for June, for June the 6th will be the new Diablo. Which I'm, yeah, okay, I'm still thinking about that, whether or not that's going to be a birthday purchase. Harmony of the, of the Fall of the Revenue on the Switch PC and Drogno on the PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Switch and PC for the 13th of June. Is that it, really? Mm-hmm. Are you going to do the subscriptions? Yeah, so on Games of Gold, I believe we've got uh, Blade Storm Nightmare on Xbox One and The Catch. Carp and Course Fishing um, on Xbox One as well. Game Pass, we've got uh, Slayers X Terminal Aftermath Vengeance of the Slayer, because I couldn't figure out a longer title to call it. That's from June the 1st. Uh, Amnesia The Bunker, I can't remember that one's coming out, but it might be the 6th. And then uh, Dordogne, which is June the 13th. On Twitch, there is a load of games coming out. Uh, Sengoku 2 on the games app. Uh, um, Mutter Asian uh, Nation on the Amazon game app. Soccer Brawl game app over the uh, over top on the game app. The Super Spy, again, same place. All of these are more or less the same. Top Hunter, Steam World Dig 2, Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition. Um, Autonauts, Revita, Rogue Book, Once Upon a Jester, and uh, Gems of Destiny, Homeless Dwarf as well. And don't forget, if you're on Epic, you can get for free Fallout New Vegas Ultimate Edition until the 1st of June. Well worth pick up if you haven't played it. Have you picked it up ready for if you ever get a PC? No, because I have that on my... I have that edition of my Xbox. Well, would, why wouldn't you just pick it up for free on your PC as well? Well, my, my PC is running on water and oil at the moment because it's oh, so old. Yeah, but when you... Yeah, if, to replace if and it, when, if and when, yeah, that's what you mean. Because, uh, <laughs> you know, I was looking, you could actually get a decent spec for playing a game like that PC now for like 100 quid on mm. Amazon. Yeah, yeah. They'll easily run that at top hmm. top settings. Yeah. Um yeah. Anyway, what have you been playing, Steve? So some it's a game we haven't even really talked about. I'm just booting it up now actually. Just to be I think we want to maybe say a few things about it. So have you been playing Star Wars at all? Uh yeah, I bought that. I've uh, started playing it, but I quickly moved on to other stuff not because i've had any problems with it. it's just mm. uh i don't know I, I just think i'm not in the mood for something that is like so super long at the moment i keep dipping in and out of it but yeah i mean i i hit it hard for a week i think 
Um, it's okay. Um, it's got its it's got its problems, but it's as in every game these days, I think. Mm. You know, um, story's a bit lackluster at the minute. I don't know where the story's even going. But I think that might just be the way that way that it's been a couple of big updates for the game recently, so I haven't really gone back since. Yeah, I mean, I think that probably the thing that put me off is the uh, the fact that I started a few weeks before it came out. I started playing um, Fallen Order. Did you get burnt out then? I think that's probably what it is because I've got um, Jedi Survivor on the PlayStation Five, but I've got Fallen Order on my Steam Deck, so I was like, sort of like right. sat in the living room playing it. Mm. And I think I've probably just played it a little bit too much because the same thing happened with me with uh, Dead Space and the Callisto Protocol because I started mm. playing the original Dead Space on my handheld. Yeah. Um, and then when it came to that game, I was a bit, oh, I'm a bit fed up of this now. Mm. No, I. <laughs> Not through a fault of the game. No. Um, Destiny 2, obviously, has a new season kicking. Mm-hmm. Um, season of the deep i yeah. just recently just started it and yeah it's it's really i like the introduction we go back to titan or the old tankers if you remember that yeah where sloan is the npc there so i haven't really got too deep in with it at the minute i have done what i did do first was there's another mission for um lightfall where you can pick up an exotic hand cannon Mm. So I did that. That was a little bit, um, a little bit challenging at the end, until I chose the, the right character to, um, with the right <clears throat> stuff to, to take out the main boss at the end. So yeah, that was all pretty good. Um, yeah, it is what it is. I'll say I can talk about it more maybe maybe in a week's time if I get back into it a bit more because I really haven't had the chance. Um, other than that, the Xbox has had a few updates recently. I don't know if you've noticed the icons have all changed size. Haven't noticed, to be honest, because I haven't actually been on the Xbox. Yeah. <clears throat> so everything now, where everything was very big in the front of the screen, in front of your face, all the um, icons for the games you've been playing are all much smaller now in the middle of the screen. Yeah, it's the new interface. Yeah. Um, it looks all right. It works well. It's not... It's, it's a, as fast as it's always been. I mean, you always, I don't mind a tweak or two if this is what we want to try and do. They give you also in the top left hand corner, they'll give you your Microsoft points in there as well, switching between that and your email address. Yeah. Um, I just put another fiver in on the pot the other day. I've got 26,395 at the moment on mine. <laughs> You need, to, you, need to, you need to transfer some of that across. I'm waiting until it gets to 25 quid. Oh, okay. So paying that, not been paying much golf to be fair. I think that's about it really. I haven't really delved in anything too much as, as I say I've been not been paying for the games too much at the moment. Mm. Um yeah, not not a great deal unfortunately, but I'm sure you can fill in the, the gaps for me. Uh yeah, sure. I mean the first game that I've been playing is uh against all odds. So um, this was a free game on Epic. Um, there was also another Kangaroo something or other. I can't remember what it was called. Mm. Um, I did a couple of videos uh, on those, uh, which proved to be relatively popular, uh, or at least in terms of my, our channel, because it, we get such low numbers. Uh, but um, against all odds, what can I, how can I describe this? It's basically you pit yourself against seven other players in a variety of uh, multiplayer battles where uh, the others are not only your competitors are also uh, you know your concern your concern but they're not the only concern because this is like uh, if super meat boy Mm. met doritos crash course from the 360 if they and and they had a love child it would be called against all odds (coughs) Okay. I'm thinking of the song at the minute, but carry on. Yeah. Uh, so, <clears throat> if you imagine the good, the blood and the gore, and you know the the revolving chainsaws and all of that mm. from Super Meat Boy, yeah. but then you add it to the gameplay of uh, of Doritos Crash Course, which is 
um, like that program that Richard Hammond used to host that was done in Argentina where they were running along stuff and swinging and you know trying not to fall in the water well it's it's that game but with chainsaws basically and rotary saws uh, the graphics are pretty base, basic but serviceable. You know, they, they look all right. Um, yeah, so it's it's just an enjoyable game, uh, to be honest. Um, it's nothing too uh, sort of like serious or anything like that. It's just all uh, a good bit of fun. Mm. So, yeah, de- uh, definitely worth, or it was worth a pick up, um, you know, for free. Yeah. is what I would say. Um, yeah, so uh, if you've already picked that one up and you haven't played it, definitely uh, do that. The next one is Star Trek Resurgence. Oh, mm. I think this is going to be the one that you're going to be interested in. So this is a, they describe it as an epic narrative adventure featuring dialogue-driven role-playing and rich branching storylines You will also engage with Star Trek Universe in a variety of ways, including uh, shuttle piloting, phaser fights, and tricorder scanning stealth and more. So where where do you pick this up? Is this a PC game or...? Uh, I got this on the Epic Store because it was only available on Epic Mm. or on Xbox. Right. Um, And this smells of Game Pass to me. So, is it on but, there for Game Pass yet or not? No, no, it's not. And in matter of fact, I don't think it's even, well, I'm not sure whether or not you can even pick it up on, I'm going to have a look while you're chatting. on the Game Store because when I had a look on the day of release, mm. it wasn't actually on there. And even on uh, Epic up until later on in the day, it was saying it's not available yet. So it's very much sort of like your narrative adventure with lots of dialogue driven um options the way that the telltale games were because uh the game is brought to you from dynamic labs which was an offshoot of telltale um and so you know you engage with the star trek universe uh in a lot of different sort of ways um it's really well written i think watching the trauma watching the trailer now actually yeah uh, there is a variety of different sort of objectives for you to be able to do. There's obviously the obligatory quick time events that they have uh, going through the game as well. Mm. Um, and a number of moral choices uh, for you to take. So one of the first ones, which if you watch part one of the streams that I'm doing at the moment, um, you ha- are given an order to do something by the captain, but doing so will possibly oh, okay, excellent. Yeah, keep it a secret. I'm not, but yeah, I can. Yeah, p- possibly kill a member of staff <clears throat> who's out, you know, outside of the ship, and you know, you have more information and have been told if we do it this way, we can, you know, make sure everyone's all right and. Uh, whatever so you have to decide do you follow the captain's rules when you've said that you're not going to go against him or Mm. do you uh do what you think is right knowing that the captain didn't have all of the facts and obviously how you react to things that where they've sort of like a little bit more advanced than the previous uh, telltale games is Mm. uh you there's sort of like uh, a relationship system with different people which seems to have more of an impact than yeah. the, you know, Kenny will remember <clears throat> this from the the Walking Dead games. Mm. Um, and it either gives you more options for dialogue choices at certain parts of the game and or closes off options for you to be able to ask somebody to do something and that sort of thing. Mm. Um, I mean, I, I haven't tried different plays through at the moment. I'm playing, I'm trying to play through my... If I was a Starfleet officer, what would I do? Sort of approach, <laughs> which is not necessarily so how, what I would do. So, how long does the game last for? I'm not too sure. Um, I've been playing it for a couple of hours mm. so far, uh, but the graphics—they're not the best graphics in the world, but they're not I mean, bad. They don't look—they don't look bad. I mean, the, yeah, I've, the, seen, I've seen worse. Oh, yeah, definitely seen worse. They're not <clears> bad <throat> games. I mean, right throughout this, if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll be. Uh, 
seeing the graphics of the game i'll you know have that on screen but i will say it is in it is on the store Oh, it is on the star it now because it, it wasn't on the star at one point on the 23rd, I think it came out. So, yeah, this is the Series X logo and alongside it to give it better frame rates and whatever. How much did you pay for it before I say what the price is on here? Uh, I paid 23. Was that on PC? Yeah. So it will be cheaper than what it is on console. Yeah, but thirty-five pounds on there, is it? Thirty-three forty-nine. Thirty-three forty-nine. Yeah. And to be, be honest, I think the reason why I I did it is because I paid with PayPal and I got a ten pound off for using PayPal. Oh, okay. So yeah, but it was a it's about thirty-five pound standard. Don't price. think I can use PayPal on Xbox, can you? Yes, I think you can. Should we? Can you add an account to it? Can you? Yeah. I think so. I mean, it's, I mean, there's been a lot of Star Trek games over the years, and they've all pretty sucked, haven't they? Not all of them, but most of them. I remember the one where we had Chris Pine and Zachary Quinto. Do you remember that one? Yeah, uh, yeah, that one. I actually have that one as well. <laughs> yeah, I and I completed that, it as well. And that was a yeah. labour of love. It's one called Star Trek Prodigy Supernova. I don't even know what that one is. That's based on the Star Trek uh, tin-off, uh, spin-off uh, cartoon. Yes, I can tell by looking at it. Which is on uh, Nickelodeon. And funnily enough, I was considering buying that today. That's, just because 40, it's, that's 45 That's is, 44.99. Do you know how much it is in CEX? Go on. 15. Is it what, as a disc? Yeah. Oh, there you go. Best so I, I was seriously thinking about buying it at CEX and just seeing what it's like. But it is like more of a kid sort of game because it's the mm. cartoons on Nickelodeon. So, the, the Star Trek Resurgent is just short of 12 gig. Mm. It's not massive. No, but considering my, I look at my Xbox and I, you know what mine's like. Yeah. I don't have any extra hard drive. And um, I'll have to have a purchase. What, what I would say is, yes, this is like a Telltale sort of game, but it's like the next generation Telltale game. Mm. It's closer to uh, things like Heavy Rain than it right. is, uh, you know, but obviously in a Star Trek universe. Mm. You don't have to be shouting Jason or Picard or anything like that, don't worry. Uh, but it's uh you, you actually you're on a different ship entirely you you will come across like will riker in the game and stuff like that but you're not uh going to use those characters no the two main characters that you uh play in the game uh is one is the exo of uh, the ship who's newly appointed um some of the staff don't like her because she's come in to replace the previous XO who got killed in a uh, warp, ex- warp experiment accident. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the other one is a young engineer who's just uh, starting out on the ship. And uh, he has like a romance sort of storyline as well. So th- th- those are the two characters that you basically play. Uh, so you mm. play it from two different perspectives and occasionally they overlap yeah because that's going to be a heavy choice isn't it I'm, I'm imagining what they do with that and therefore yeah. depends how that, part, how that goes through yeah I think it'll be interesting to play it through different times with different reactions you know like play the, uh, playing it through again but doing the renegade version mm. um, yeah. yeah although I must admit I, did, I know I did choose the wrong option at one point uh, the non-Starfleet way because I think I was just thinking about something I drifted off for a second and then the next thing I know was there was a countdown for a thing and it t- said either show strength or uh, you know show deference and I showed strength and I should have showed deference in the Star Trek tradition because it was uh, to the leader do you know what mm. I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, but other than that I think I've done the pure you know Starfleet approach yeah right have the you, way through have you ever decided and i haven't myself yet there's an update there looks like 
Have you ever gone back to Star Trek Online? No. Do you ever play it? I did play it, but I was immediately put off by the fact that there's a level cap. Mm. You know, I, I don't want to get myself involved in a game where I'm going to end up paying like 15 quid or 12 quid, whatever it is, a month just to play the it, game. Because I, I own it. Um, well, we all own it because you give it, they're giving it for free. Uh, but, but there there are some packs there that are free, some online stores yeah. free. Uh, just having a look there. It, all, oh. all of that that's free is there to hook you, to get you to play the game, so that you will then be hooked because you're a Star Trek fan, and then you'll be paying them £15 a month, and I'm not getting involved in that. No, I mean, that's, yeah, that is um, unfortunate. I'm so, I'm saying it arbitrarily, fifteen pounds. Yeah, I, mean, I have no idea what it I is. I mean, there are other games out there that do the same thing, obviously. Um, World of Warcraft, for example. Exactly. So, but interesting, yes. That's the only two Star Trek games that's got on there, I think. My type yeah. of Star Trek. I did. I did own the. Um, there's a small mini game. Oh, you can buy the Star Trek Online lifetime subscription. On. How many pennies is that? Three hundred. No. Yeah. Well, two hundred ninety-nine ninety-nine dollars. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, which is just you know, um, yeah. unreal. <laughs> so I'm looking at the add-ons. I'm looking at the add-ons there. The only add-on which is free is the, well. There are, there are some free actual currency bits and pieces there for you. Mm. Um, but there is, there is a new story called The Refractions. Is it, is it free? Is it, is I would it? love to play it, but I just, I know what I'm like and I do not want to um, get myself stuck in that. You know, and... End in that up, rut. Yeah. Mm. Because it's just throwing away money uh, to me it's less value than subscribing yeah. to game pass no i it's unfortunate they do that there are games out there like that, that because they they got the name against them that do you know what i mean yeah um but <clears throat> yeah it's i'm trying to think what was the other star trek game I think it was a 360 game. Um, I just, I remember, because they had, it had, just going to my 360 games at the moment, I'm not too cheap. I've just looked up the Star Trek Online um, monthly cost, by the way, and it is $14.99. Mm. So about £12, something like that, 12 99 yeah. Um, so, which is a lot of money. Oh, it is, yeah. It's, it's just a shame. Yeah. Because I'm, you know, I'm already in a racket with Adobe because I use Adobe Photoshop. Mm. So I mean, I'm in that, that for... I'm not, I'm, not gonna, I'm not even going to click on Ubisoft Plus. <laughs> no, no. I, I, things like Ubisoft Plus is it's just a waste of money. But it's pointless because you and I, well, we own bulk. You own the bulk of them anyway through the Assassin's yeah. Creed game. Um, yeah. Well, I own the Assassin's Creed games. I own the Division games. Yeah. Um, I own the uh, what's the one that Alan always played? Uh, where you're a team of four. Got what it's called. Mm. Uh, a bit, a bit like. Uh, the division was like that, wasn't it? No, no, not the division. Um, you know the one where you went into the jungle, and it was a bit like just cars. Oh, I know. Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah, but more, re- more realistic that one. Yeah. Uh, that game was, yeah, that game was not sure about. Have you played Chorus yet? I can't remember. 
This is on um, Game Pass. Yeah. Sort of sci-fi space adventure. I think I'm thinking of uh, Scorn rather than... Um, let's have a look. This one here is, is obviously with Game Pass. She was once a circle deadliest warrior, and now she's the most wanted fugitive at Nara and her starfighter. <clears throat> you disappear to storyline, I can't see it now. There's an image of a woman floating in, in, in space with a ship. Behind. Yeah, no, I've not played that yet. It's uh, on my to do list, but. Yeah, it looks good actually. Mm-hmm. Um, how big is that game? It's from Fish Labs. When you look at some of the, looking at the actual screenshots, it's pretty cool. 31.8 gig. I'm going to have to start up this search. I'll have to delete the game then. <laughs> so the other game I've been playing is a, a Game Pass game. And it is a perfect example of a little indie game that um, it's not a five-minute completion, mm. but it's so playable, and that's Vampire Survivors. You see, I know about this game. I hear everyone screaming and shouting about it, and I don't, it's not my cup of tea. It's so Sorry. addictive. Um, it's so addictive. I, I, you can play it on your phone, apparently now. It's everywhere, isn't it? It's, every man and dog can play it. Yeah, and I, I've been totally enjoying that that game. Mm. I've got it on PC, PlayStation, sorry, uh, Xbox, um, and I've also been playing it on uh, my Steam Deck, mm. and absolutely love it. It's just, it's a real pick up and drop sort of game. You know, the the longest the game's going to last is about half an hour. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's uh. It's a loo game. <laughs> well, since you say that, right? You know, you know, you know, like what we do with our Microsoft points, and mm. so obviously you've got your Bing, you've got your Bing stuff to do, where you're getting your ten points a day, and you go through all that. Yeah. And also, they've got a new bit on there, haven't they? Have you noticed? There, they've got a day by day. So if you keep going every day, you'll get up to. I think after a week, you get a little sack, so you get double points or something for it. Yeah. So you've got all that now. Then obviously you've got the Xbox app, where you go in, you log in daily with that as well. And there was one on there. <laughs> My piss is, is quite, quite funny, it was. Um, if I log on to it. So when you go to, when you go to your icon for Xbox, and then there's one, you've got uh, rewards. There's one called Tap Here to Play for five points, yeah? So I clicked mm-hmm. on it, and it's a dual game. You launch a game within it. And basically what it is, is do you remember the dual games on the, like the Xbox? So what it is, I don't know if you can see that. Mm-hmm. Um, and you get points for playing on your phone. And I sat in the toilet for half an hour, just swinging jewels across all day long. Um, let me close it down. Yeah, and things like that get do get addicted, whether it's vampires or, or, or whatever. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, if you've not played Vampire Survivors before, uh, the way that the game works is I think there's about nine or ten levels, but you can buy like expansion packs and whatever. Uh, It's on Game Pass. If you want to buy it, it's only about five or six quid anyway. So it's not like an expensive game. Um, And it's like I said, it's on Steam uh, as well. Uh, Because, you know, most of the time I play it on the Steam Deck, I've actually bought it on there. But what happens is when you're playing uh, the game is you start off with like a weapon. And then, you know, so... You might start off with, I think when you first start off, you start off with a whip. And that, you can, the whip will only go one way. And it's all very like, you know, um, 16 bit graphics. So I think I've probably been nice to it by saying 16 bit, because it's probably 8 bit Mm. graphics. Um, But 
you, you whip will only fire one way, but enemies will come from all over. And when you kill an enemy, some of them will drop a little gem. When you get so many gems, then you level up and it gives you a randomised option of one or three or four uh, different uh, weapons or power-ups that you can use. So what the, one of the most effective ones, particularly right at the beginning of the game, is to get garlic. Because if you get garlic and you get the one to extend the range of the influence of the garlic, uh, then enemies will come up to you and your breath will just kill them. <laughs> Sort of thing. Uh, so, you know, things like spiders and ghosts will just disappear. Other mm. tougher enemies might, you know, you might have to shoot and also uh, have garlic, uh, you know, to get them in like one shot sort of thing. Uh, but you can have things to pull gems in towards you more quickly and stuff mm -hmm. like that as well. And you can you can level up that so that your you know your level of magnetism for these gems uh, gets greater and greater there's uh throwing knives there's um throwing axes there's all sorts of stuff uh, that you you know you can do um and each character that is available and you unlock more characters the more that you play uh, each character has their own unique sort of weapons, but they can also have other weapons as well. And then you can also buy power up so that you start more powerful each game rather than starting at the very core basic, which is very, very hard to uh, get leveled up very quickly on, on those ones. Uh, one of the power ups that you can buy is actually a curse and what that does is it doubles the strength and the frequency of the enemies as well mm -hmm. uh, but obviously the more enemies that you kill the more power-ups that you will get up to a maximum number and then you start getting food and money uh, but that's only when you like hitting level 75 or something or other like that um, I think the highest I've got a character up before death has killed me has been 103, if I okay. remember rightly. Um, and that was sort of like at the end of 30 minutes of non-stop playing of the game. Uh, but when death comes, there is a way to kill death, but you've got, you know, it's sort of like a bit exploitive um, to kill him. So, and I haven't bothered doing that as of yet uh but um most of the time death will just come and stand over you and then basically kill you and even mm. if you've got a revival you'll still die um but yeah it's just a really addictive fun little game well worth having a go if you haven't played it steve just have a try no, I, on I, had a, I had a look at it and i, I thought okay you know, you thought um, that looks incredibly rubbish graphics, and I don't that looks absolute shite. I thought, yeah, I'm do you know what? It's a perfect example of <clears throat> awful graphics, great gameplay. Yeah, seriously, have a try because it's like 300 meg to download. I could try and be fine, couldn't I? Yeah, when well, I'm sitting there watching something on the telly, I can download it. All right, I'll give it a whirl. Yeah, and then you'll suddenly find that you lose hours of your day. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. I mean, it's, yeah. Um, I'm just looking for Star Trek Resurgence on CD keys. It's all sold out. Yeah, I was looking for it why? on CD keys as be, well. Why can it, it be sold out? They've never had it on that I've seen. They've got it. I can get it on there for 29.909. If it's, if it's in. If it's in, but they haven't had I'll get, it. I'll they get haven't minus, had it in. That's the thing. Um, yeah, it's not been on. I've just asked for a notification if it comes around. Because mm. I'll have a look. So I haven't played that's it, I haven't played the bridge crew on PlayStation for donkeys. That's the VR game. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you don't you know you don't need VR to play it. To play what? Bridge crew. Oh no, I've got VR anyway to play it. So I've played it. I've, I've had a couple of Cut a game with a few people back in the day. I, uh, funny enough, talk about Star Trek games. Um, yeah. I actually played two other Star Trek games as well. Okay. 
two good ones, but from yesteryear. I played Star Trek Voyager Elite Force mm-hmm. and Star Trek Elite Force 2. I don't remember those games. Do you know, if you have a look at our YouTube channel, mm. uh, you'll see I did two videos uh, of those. You know, mm. um, The first, like, hour, hour and a half of each one. Yeah. Um, but the, uh, the I got them from Great Old Games that were on sale. Mm-hmm. Um, because I've got a few Star Trek games like the uh, Judgment Rights and uh, stuff like that, you know, the point and click adventures, yeah, that they used to be. And you know, I really, uh, I really used to like those games. Mm. Um, it, my experience of them wasn't the PC version, though, but I because I was playing them, I think, on the Amiga, if I remember rightly. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd like to see another, another type of game. You know, like forward out. I mean, oh wait, Starfields can be my next sort of game in that frame that I'd like to see. Yeah. But we're just getting some decent Star Trek on the telly to listen. It's not kind of chickens, you know, like anything else really. But yeah. Anyway, are we done? Should we move on? Yeah, I think so. Let's move on to movies, TV, and streaming. In quest of a better life. So, movies, TV and streaming, and we're going to start off with a really sad bit of news. Tina Turner has passed away at the age of 83. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, if you've been living under a rock and have never heard music, you won't know who she is, but she was the pioneering rock and roll star who became the pop bohemia in the 80s, uh, and she's had a uh, long illness and it's uh, finally um, taken her unfortunately she suffered ill health in recent years and been diagnosed with the intestinal cancer in 2016 and having had uh, a kidney transplant in 2017 uh, in a statement her publicist uh, said that uh, Tina Turner the queen of Rock and roll has died peacefully at the age of 83 after a long illness in her home in Kuznacht near Zurich in Switzerland yeah. uh, with her the world loses a music legend and a role model and I think that that's perfectly fair she was a you know incredible woman I mean when I when I look she was actually the same age as my mum right okay yeah yeah uh, I dug out I played a little bit of Tina this morning I got a, a white label promotional copy of a song called Disco Inferno that was spinning yeah. this morning it's it's so. funny you know but um we've nicknamed uh loki our dog mm. tina turner because although he's a boy he's got black hair and it's so like i know wild and, you know, and he, you know, and he like, looks like tina turner from the 80s yeah, with a big yeah. hair or, or or should i say one half of wayne's world yeah <laughs> Yeah, it, it, yeah, and, uh, it keep, keeps saying to him, he's Tina Turner's wig. Yeah. And he knows we're taking the mick out of him and he barks as every time we say Tina Turner, it was like... <laughs> and also, some people, if you don't know and have not seen Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, then you will see her there playing a character called Auntie. Yeah. Which I watched the other night, funny enough. Just to... Yeah, but I don't need another hero. <laughs> I do. But I'm simply the best. Boom, boom. <laughs> oh, dear. But, yeah, I did... Uh, I used to like Tina Turner. Um, Chris Eubank did. Such a shame. Because he used to use Simply the Best when he came out on the... Um, on, out on the, out the yeah, ring. he did, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah. yeah. He did. Yeah, that's funny. Um, next bit of news is about Star Trek Section 31. Um, This is going to be an original movie event starring the Oscar winner Michelle Yeoh has been announced. Uh, Paramount Plus uh, announced that it's officially been greenlit the Section 31 um, movie that's going straight on to, you know, the uh, Paramount Plus starring the Academy Award winner Michelle Yeoh uh, in a special original movie event uh, for the service. Yeoh will reprise her role as uh, Emperor 
Philippa Giorgio uh, and a, a character she first played in Star Trek Discovery's uh, first to third seasons. She was quoted as saying, I'm beyond thrilled to return it to my Star Trek family and to the role I've loved for so long. She said that uh, Sebris Helio and Section 31 has been near and dear to my heart since I began the journey of playing Philippa all the way back uh, when this new Golden Age Star Trek launched. To see her finally get her moment is a dream come true uh, in a year that has uh, shown me the incredible power of never giving up. Um, we can't wait to share what's in store for you. And until then, live long and prosper, unless Emperor George or decrees otherwise. So, yeah, I think it should be one that to uh, watch out for. I think, because originally this was supposed to be a TV series, and I think that with her well, I thought... get, getting the Academy Award, yeah. I bet she's now too expensive to be a mainstay on a well, TV series. Thing is, she be... was, wasn't, wasn't it her that was in um, Crouch and Grey... Tiger, Hidden Dragon? Bre- Grey's Anatomy as well. I don't know. I didn't watch Grey's Anatomy. Yeah, I think she was in that. She was one of the main characters for years in that. <clears throat> I, might, I might be her. I might not. I might be. I might be thinking of Oo. I can't remember the other actress, but um, I don't remember ever being said that she was in that. No, I think I'm thinking of someone else. I, I think know. you are. <laughs> Very similar um, looking though. I'll take your word for it. I don't know who no. you're referring to. Yeah, I'll have a look in a minute, and I'll, I'll ping you. That's cool. Anyway, carry on. Uh, yeah. So. I'm looking forward to this. I did like the character of Philippa Giorgio. You're the emperor. Um, and what I hope is that she goes back uh, and uh, links in with, um, I forgot what his name is, but who uh, used to be uh, on, um, I would call it, Toast of London. Mm-hmm. Um whatever you call it, Fandango, you know. Yeah, yeah. Who uh, who was the Klingon who then got made into a human and then he got, a, you know, had the uh, relationship mm. with uh, Spock's sister. Oh. Was he Taylor or whatever he was? I can't remember. I can't remember what his character was called now. Yeah, I can't actually. Um, just goes to prove what an impact it had. But he was quite good. I would like to see him back and that. and Because he went into section... 31 didn't he um yeah so i'll have to wait and see what what that comes up with uh also galaxy quest the tv series well i thought this was supposed to be another movie originally no evidently there are no details on the series at all it's unclear if it will be a reboot or a continuation of the original film which saw the cast of the Star Trek light TV show accidentally mistaken for the TV characters by an alien race who intercepted the show's broadcast and it's understood them for documentaries of actual space adventures. Uh, it's possible that the original cast could be returning, minus obviously Alan Rickman because he'd be looking very thin now. Uh, who, he, 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 he was one of my favourite characters though. Yeah. I loved, he was great in that. By Graptar's hammer I will avenge you. <laughs> And he's sort of very depressing character as the, as the person that was playing the yeah. actual character. But, he, yeah, he was brilliant. But to be honest, I, I would actually quite like to see Tim Allen come back in Sigourney Weaver. In I think series. Tim Allen doesn't, doesn't, doesn't do a lot these days. He's done a couple of Christmas movies, has not he? Yeah, um, Buzz like yeah. Yeah, a little bit of Buzz. But um, not, not the new movie, the Toy Story Buzz like yeah. Yeah, and um, Sigourney Weaver's done a couple of bits and pieces as well. Not much, though. Mm. Other than a bit of Avatar, using her her voice and body for that. Bit of Paul. Yeah, bit of Paul, yeah. She didn't last very long in that, did she? <laughs> that was so funny. Actually, there's, a couple, there's something else I want to mention, actually. I just remember it while we're here. Okay. Do you want to mention that, then? So, first of all, um, there was a surprise image on... Um, I think I saw it. I think I... Did I see it on Twitter? No, I didn't. I posted it on there. So Netflix are doing a TV series or movie, I don't know which, yet, of Bioshock, which has yes. been in, it's been in, it's been on the offing for a number of years. Nobody's really taking it. Um, there's this now, we've got this show, we've got Fallout on Prime as well. So two of my favourite franchises are getting TV shows or something for you to be able to watch, which I'm pretty happy for. Um, Bioshock, I think, is again out there with, with Fallout for me. 
Mm. I don't know how, how you feel about the, sh- the series. There's been rumours of a new game as well. Whether that's true or not, um, I don't know. And then something else that's come out now, we know more of. Obviously, since The Flash is now, I'm so looking forward to that movie. I really am. The Flash is going to be, it's probably going to be second to Mission Impossible, if you've seen the trailer for that now. Um, and Indiana Jones would be there, down the bottom out of, out of at least the 10 movies that are coming out over the summer. Um, and we won't mention that. But something that's in production at the moment is Beetlejuice 2. Mm. And interestingly enough... Don't say it three times. Yeah, don't say it three times. <clears throat> the cast list is looking pretty juicy. So we've got Michael Keaton, very correct me if wrong. He has a wife in it who's Monica Belletti, that's his wife. Um, That's also, a reason to watch it <laughs> straight off. <laughs> um, we know Ryder's coming back. Yeah. And she's got a daughter. And her daughter's played by Jenny Ortaga. As in Wednesday. Wednesday, yeah. yeah. Um, who else is in there? Let's have a look. And William Defoe's in it as well. And Catherine O'Hara is in it as well, who was in the original one. Hell of a good cast. Yeah, Defoe's brilliant. And Tim Burton's directing it, so I think we quit in with that one. Yeah, definitely looking forward to that. Um, yeah, 1988 was the original movie. I've got that sitting on my shelf myself. That's um, not bad. Great film, love it. Mm. So expected September to 2024. Well, actually, no, actually, it's, it's, yes, September 6th, 2024. They reckon it's coming out. Yeah, so they must be well on with it. Just going back to The Flash, Mm. asking you honestly, Mm. are you looking forward to seeing Ezra Miller as The Flash, or are you looking for, do you want to see the film because of everything else that's happening in that movie? Well, I didn't, I mean, let's let's take away what he's been getting up to in his personal life at the moment, because that we don't need to talk about. No. Now, I didn't mind, all right, I didn't mind him in Justice League, you know, we all would like may, maybe would have liked another another Flash playing the Flash. Yeah, as in the I, one from the TV series. Ironically, and I will get back to watching that because I am going to finish it because they're on the last season. It's called the final season. They've aired the last episode. Well, it's on Sky at the moment. That yeah, series, but, that but season. They've, aired, they've aired it in America. In America, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I think I'm going to catch up on all those at some point. Well. I've gone back to the Flash TV series, so I'm uh, halfway through season eight. I'm about, I think I'm halfway through seven at the moment. Yeah. Seven, eight and nine. Yeah, so I'm halfway through eight now. And, yeah. I didn't see all of the ones in season seven, Mm. but I couldn't remember where I was up to, so I thought I'll just start from eight. I mean, I can, because Sky tells me what I've watched and what I haven't watched, so. Yeah. It's me to go back. Um, But going back to the movie, yes, I think it's got more of an appeal because we're going to get Michael Keaton back playing the 1989 Batman. And if this goes well, and if if it can hit that marvellous million or two or whatever, 100 million, wherever it's going to be, Warner Brothers will say, can we go back and and get him back in the cape again? And I think it it would have the pull for it. And I must admit, if it didn't have Michael Keaton in, you wouldn't be as interested. I wouldn't be going because I do not like Ezra Miller as an actor. I think he's useless um, personally. But, you know, we can't like everybody. I just don't like him. He He's like my third least favourite actor. A long cut. He, where does he sit with James Corden sits in? I'm interested. Oh, uh, I don't. I would classify James Corden as an actor. No, I would. You, would... You've got your hit list, haven't you? People, sorry, but if you have a hit list, uh, well, in terms of, in terms of celebrities, yeah, mm. yeah, James Corden has to be the top of that. So okay, Ezra Miller would have to be fourth then, uh, but above him is Nicolas Cage. <laughs> yeah, of course, we've got that one. And above <laughs> him. Above Nicolas Cage, there is somebody I don't like more, is Ryan Gosling. Because Ryan Gosling, they say he's such a terrific actor, I have not seen him have any other face apart from 
We need to do that for an Android in Blade Runner 2049, don't you? I'm not. I'm not kidding you. There, there have been more expressive statues, and he can't act. Yeah. And I mean, the, the only reason why he gets a job is because he's a pretty boy and the women like him. That's why I think he gets the job, because you know I'm not saying he's not a you know he's not a decent looking <laughs> bloke. I'm you know I'm a I'm a bloke. I can't really judge, but mm. you know he doesn't seem to be like a decent. You know, he, he seems to be all right, but he has no personality. He has no expression and he has no acting ability why mm. you know he's he's sort of like nicholas cage with the mediocre of charm that he has removed mm. i mean and i just i just yeah. can't yeah, understand got, i mean there are more cameos in the flash than we've got hot potatoes oh yeah have you heard one of the ones that's in there well obviously we know supergirl's in there um someone else playing her from from new well, obviously we know yeah. that you know ben affleck's in there Yes. I'll try to stay away from spoilers. Uh, we've got Michael Shannon playing General Zod again. Yes. Which has been pretty cool. Um, I'm just going to try and move a date so it might not. Um... I, I have heard that there is going to be a Superman that never happened in it. Because that's interesting. There's a lot of viruses in this because obviously this is a flat. This is going to be a, a two and four back and forth story um some characters here i've not got names against them for reasons yes like. um i i believe that uh the man of steel is barry to, allen's to, gonna, barry allen's gonna bounce around his entire life by the looks of it yeah but i i understand that our uh just recently left superman is turning back up in it but there is wow. going to be another superman who has never appeared on screen, but well, there's a character. There's an actor here. There's an actor here who's got nothing against his name. So I've mentioned the actor, but I don't want to know too much. I really want to just try and enjoy this for what it will be, because the first half of the movie, until we see Michael Keaton come out in his, in his suit, we'll be waiting for that. Yeah, and that'd be the biggest cheer. Um. So, to, yeah. to be honest, they didn't need to add all of the other actors in. I would have gone for well, because it's Fla- yeah, but because it's Flashpoint and the, they're using that, they're doing that mm. comic story of of him bouncing around, giving us some um, timeline. I do think it's a good idea to reset the the DCMU though. Yeah, I I read because to be honest, the Marvel universe is a bit stale now. There's a couple of movies I. Um, I, want to, I want to watch Quantumania anyway because I can watch it on Disney Plus at the moment. Yeah. So I'll watch it for fun. Take it as it is. And it is. Um, it's a fun movie. It's, you know, it's... I won't be paying for it, so that's all right. It's fine. I can watch it. And I, Guardians. I, yeah, I won't get to the cinema for that, unfortunately, to see Guardians, but I've stayed away from spoilers and I will probably, when it gets released on Disney Plus, so I'll watch it on there. I, I've and that, that's it. You don't say, don't say anything. I know you have. Don't say anything else. You don't I'm, read it. I'm not going to talk about the story. What I'm going to say is Guardians of the Galaxy 3 mm. is great. Definitely yeah. worth going to see. Oh, yeah. Um, it's, you know, a <laughs> fine, it's a fine movie. It felt like Marvel coming back. But other than that, I mean, we, oh, we've got the Fantastic Four coming, haven't we, for example? At some point in the future, at some undecided time, because everything's being pushed back, you, you're talking it'll be about 26, 27 before yeah, as as you get that. Bit. Yeah, but there's, I just feel that I think it's time now for DC to pull their acting together, maybe. Yeah. Um, bring a few movies out. We've had a few, we've had a few stinkers. Uh, I, as much as I do own it, Wonder Woman 2 wasn't the greatest movie. But I do like Gal Gadot and it's it's really interesting all of this with uh, Jonathan Majors though, because Disney are evidently dropping him, and mm. um, obviously he's been built up to the new big bad. So um, they're having to rewrite the whole of the future story going forward. Mm. So I think that Kang will end up getting replaced with Doctor Doom. Mm. Or they'll put a new actor in. 
and, and with and like super, and, and obviously much. Superman. There's an interesting story of how they take that for the next big movie for Superman because uh, it won't be. Won't well, be I, I have to admit because of the news that I have heard mm. about who is going to be appearing as Superman mm. in the Flash, other mm. than Henry Cavill. Mm. Um, and the fact that it's called Superman Legacy. So it's is, not the guy from Smallville, is it? <laughs> no. No. Because he can be in it as well, couldn't he, really? He, all that sort of mixing and matching. Yeah, but, but Steve, what actor was going to play Superman but never your, did? Yeah, one of your favourite mates that you hate. One of the ones I've already mentioned today. I know, yeah, I know who that is, yeah. I've, yeah. Seen him in, I've seen him in the suit when he originally applied for the job. Sorry, it just didn't work. Yeah, well, he is, yeah. of what I've heard, mm. Superman in this movie. Yeah, but that's just going to be, because it's a different, because it's Flashpoint, they can chuck anyone in the, in the Superman suit, but obviously... Yeah, they can, but I'm wondering if the Superman legacy will end up being him. Mm. <sighs> and that would be disastrous. <laughs> No, I don't think he's. I mean, you've got to have someone with a square jaw, right? He has never. He, he's not. He's got a glass jaw. Yeah, he's never been the right fit for yeah. Superman. Um, but so uh, if you if you haven't figured out who we're talking about, just do your internet on the on the. But if you don't want to, I don't want to know. I mean, I I, I know who yeah. it is. I've seen photographs originally when um, they did the casting for it. But yeah, I really want to see the Flash. I hope to get to see it on the big screen. Mm. I can't remember when it's coming out now. It's, away i will go and see indiana jones regardless of everything i've heard about it and i'm gonna yeah. without without you know we don't need to go too deep on this but i think cans beefed up a little bit when they went to the went there and they showed it um yeah it's his final outing so you can't not really not see it to be fair it's the last indiana jones movie is going to be and let, let's hope it's better than the even though I did watch the King of the Crystal Skull the other weekend, I just don't know why I did. I just put it on. And there were some good bits in it. I mean, it's dreadful, but self harming, <laughs> Haley. But there were some little scenes, and I thought, yeah, that actually looks pretty cool. And some little bits in it, but then the bulk of the film is what it is. I was to say, you must have been watching a different. No, I know. Jones and a kiss. And I, I mean, actually, skull. you put Shayla both in that list of yours as well, really. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, he, he he definitely comes below all of the ones that I've... Uh, I mean, we all watch Transformers and we just about get away with that one, don't we? Yeah. Forget about that. But, yeah, it's... Um, but, yeah. And they're re-releasing the Indiana Jones movies, aren't they? On 4K Blu-ray individually as well. Yeah. Again, which I would prefer than that shoddy box set. I've got. Yeah, well, I, I think I might just get one and three. <laughs> And uh, probably forget about the middle one. Why? Because I I've got a bit of a fondness for the second one. I saw I, I saw I saw that one in Leicester Square, mm. and all right, it's a bit darker. On the flip side, there's loads of kids in it, so it's a bit more, it's a bit a bit of a juggling act. And now you look at the film. Yeah, but even when I was a kid, I didn't like that movie. Mm. But it then was... I think. It just wasn't I think, for me. I think if you if you were to if you were to do a top three, you would have Raid. It's more well, difficult to say whether you have Raiders or or Last Crusaders first, and then Raiders, and, and then last would be two. It'd be what? It'd be one, three, two. You know. Yeah. So should we go to the Blu-rays and we get this? I think it's it. Isn't it? Uh, we've got cinema releases first. Okay. Where is that? Okay. Yeah. Do you want to do those? Yeah. So we got Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse. We have reality, wait for me, elemental, transformers, rise of the beast, another one, and war pony. I think that's a sequel to War Horse. <laughs> you never know. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, okay, so do you want to do Blu rays and then I'll have a little look through while you're. Yeah, Blu rays. I find that there's a very sort of like, it, it's not very good next week. Uh, in terms of Blu-rays. If you like Magnum PR, you're saved by the bell, you're all right. Um, but I think probably the 1963 version of The Nutty Professor 
would be my uh, pull out for next week and mm. uh, the Transformers 6 movie box set uh, you just skip through the bits with Shia LaBeouf <sighs> And then on the 5th of June, there is the Indiana Jones uh, movies in there and Robocop, the TV series, which is uh, a little bit hit and miss in times. Uh, But it's pretty poor time for for movies, I think. So I've got one of those sitting in my collection up there. I've got the Blu-ray, not the 4K. So The Changeling is a good film. That's a ghost story. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, what's that come out on? I think that was on Second Sight. Yeah, I've got the changing up there. The Fablemans, I'm really interested in that. That was Spielberg's drama, probably based on, his, on, his, on his, his himself. So it might be worth a watch. Obviously, you may, you've got Indy Mitch, Indiana Jones. Heather's the musical, no, but I do have Heather's the movie in my arrow collection. Have you ever seen that? Mm. Uh, what else we got in there? Then if we go to stuff so lots of May 29th. Okay, Black Christmas is a good film. Yeah. Um, actually, I do want to see Cocaine Bear at some point. Oh God, no, that'll be terrible. Whether I, whether I just wait until it's on Sky, just to see it. I, I think I'll wait until I get the. Um... Clockwork Orange treatment and somebody keeps my no, eyeballs I, I, I open and forces me to watch it. I love a Clockwork Orange, by the way. I, really I think um, it'll be rubbish. Also, what else have we got there? So you said Nutty Professor. Yeah, I th- uh, the original Nutty Professor I did quite find quite amusing, so that was I, quite good. I, I've got a little bit of a soft spot for that. that mm. I think Jerry Lewis is fantastic in that. He really can show two sides of a, a character that he can play. Yeah. Definitely. But we don't mention we don't mention Eddie Murphy's version. Yeah. Um, no. One of the movie in this list, actually, Wish You Were Here. Right. Okay. Does it ring a bell? No. I remember the cover where there's a girl on a bike down by the seaside. Um, now you know who played Trigger in Only Fools and Horses. Yeah. That's his daughter. All oh, right, okay, because he passed away last year, that wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> I remember that film. Yeah, that came out. I think it was that. Mm. But yeah, I do ever. I, I I go on to um, Amazon every now and then, and we just type in 4K and see what's coming up. Yeah, there, I do that as well. There isn't there isn't anything that sparks my interest other than I've got so to. I'll tell you, there's two movies I want to get in 4K. Mm. which I've never owned on Blu-ray or DVD or video, mm. but I've always loved. Mm. And that is, uh, and they're now on 4K, and that is The Three Musketeers and The Four Musketeers. The, you know, the one with Michael York. Yes. That, yes. Yeah, that Oliver was Reed. Amazing. Was that a 70s or 80s? 70s and 80s, yeah. yeah. They were brilliant movies. They were so funny. Yeah. And especially when, you know, you could hear them, you know, talk the the servants talking in the background and stuff like that. <laughs> and then, shh, shh, she's coming, she's coming. Shh. You know? there, yeah, I mean, there, there, I do have, a, I don't think I have a little list I'd like to see. There's something I'd like to own on 4K yet, but I still I haven't gone down the route yet. It's the Rocky movies. Yeah, I'll I'll tell you something that is uh, evidently coming out uh, by your favourite company, Arrow. Uh, is the Time Bandits in 4K. That's, yeah, there's that, and there's another one as well they're bringing out. Um, I had Time Bandits on VHS, and I bought it on there. <clears throat> I've got it on um, Blu-ray, mm. but I'm seriously tempted by getting it in 4K. Yeah. I'm still, I still, you know, because of the USA version, and there isn't one here, I really want The Last Starfighter. Mm. Okay. Um, obviously, you won't be able to pay the Blu-ray disc because it'd be region locked at the moment. But that's from Arrow as well. But it never, they never did a release for the UK because it's not owned by them. Um, yeah. I have got the Blu-ray in my collection up here, but again, that's just one of those movies. <clears throat> I watched a documentary about the uh, 
boy from the flight of the navigator have you seen that <laughs> many times uh, it's a nice little section on my um kickstarter yeah no i don't mean on your um i don't mean the movie i mean the documentary about no no him. no yeah yeah no what i'm saying is on the kickstarter i did for the 80s science fiction movies yeah about three hours long yeah and it's a nice little section with with him he's the flight of the navigator mm. He's much older now, obviously, and yeah, and he's been in and out of jail and that as well, hasn't he? It was uh, yeah. quite quite interesting seeing that like these uh, people that we grew up well alongside. Yeah, I mean, I would, I would have been probably for me, I'd have been a teenager when that came out. Yeah, I was younger than that. It came out around, around the same time as Short Circuit, maybe. Yeah, somewhere somewhere around there. I love it. That's quite. I do love that person. Number yeah. five is alive. Yeah, Steve Guttenberg, he, he, you know, I know he did the Police Academy, but he did the other, odd other thing as well, you know. Like, you never like, see Steve Guttenberg now, do you? No, I've seen him. I saw him on Instagram chatting away recently. No, I mean on a movie. Oh, he, yeah. He must no. have retired. And I want Cocoon in 4K as well. Yeah, that was a great movie, was that? And Cocoon Returns. They could probably do it as a bundle. Because uh, that, yeah, that, yeah. That, that, yeah. Um, have you have you uh, seen Fun Bar on uh, is it Amazon? No, it's, it's either it's either on Amazon or Netflix with mm. Schwarzenegger. It's sort of it's the premise of True Lies. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's the premise of True Lies. But in mm. terms of uh, he's a you know a secret agent, and then he finds out that his daughter's also a secret agent in the same mm. organisation. That's quite amusing. Yeah. Actually, just reminded me, so the 4K story, as we know, so we are waiting for the Abyss release date. Yeah. And we're waiting for True Lies. Can't wait for that. I love that movie. I've got it on DVD down here. That's the only thing it's on. It's not even on Blu-ray, is it? I've got a shoddy little DVD. No. Scan. I think you can stream it in HD on Apple. Mm. But they've never but it, put it on the DVD. It is, it is, it is, it is, it is to come out. It is to come out with um, obviously Avatar as well hasn't got a release date yet. They've released the the latest one. They've got a date for that now and 4K. Yeah. And I imagine they'll release it at a similar time to get the um, juices flowing on that. Uh, but yeah, I really at the minute thinking about what you want on 4K personally, I. At the moment, I can't think of much more at the minute. Mm. Yeah, no. I must admit, I'm, I'm working my way through buying the uh, Game of Thrones seasons as well mm. in 4K. Okay. Each to yeah. their own on that one. <laughs> yeah, I like Game of Thrones. Yeah. Um, it took me a lot to get into it, but when I did get into it, you know, I loved it. Um, let's do the cinema chat. So um, yeah. at number five, we've got Bo is Afraid. At number four, we have Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret. At number three is Super Mario Bros. The movie. That's making a shed of money, that movie. And it is actually very good mm. as well. I have seen it. I took my son to see it. He absolutely loved it. Um, I, I was expecting it to be, well, pretty naff. Not as naff as the Bob Hoskins version, but mm. um, it ended up being quite enjoyable. Um, so there's Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, which I have seen at the cinema as well. Really good. Enjoyed that one. And then the last one is Fast X. How <laughs> many more are they going to make? <laughs> uh, who knows? But we've had a new cinema open in North Allerton. Oh, okay. Uh, we now have an Everyman Cinema. Don't know. I've heard of that one. Uh, Everyman uh, I've not been in. There's one mm. in Harrogate and stuff like that. I don't know whether it's a northeast <clears throat> sort of cinema, but you know, like you can order a meal while you're watching a movie and you mm. can you sit in sofas and stuff like that, evidently. But it's like 15 quid to each to see a movie, which I know for for you, Dan Sath, that is probably a normal amount for a That's cinema. Average. Ticket. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas in North Yorkshire, <laughs> you're in six there, you don't do things like that. No, no. So 
Here's a penny. I'll, I, I'll either go two and a half miles that way and pay 15 quid each, or I will go uh, six miles that way and I'll pay like seven quid. Depends what you want ticket. on the screen as well, to be fair. Yeah, and uh, to be honest, I think I was, I'm just going to stick to going to the Empire at Catrick rather than mm. going to North Allerton because, um, yeah, and, and it's, it's only a four screen cinema, is it? Catrick's got several mm. screens. Okay. I'll get one of the uh, Ray Charts. The Ray Charts, on. yeah, we've got the uh, number five new entry. We've got Hopping Mad, the Vampire sequels at number four new entry. Attack on Titan, the final season, part two. At number three, a re-entry of Fear and Northern in Las Vegas. At number two, we have Creed 3. And at number one, we have Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantum Mania. Hmm. So, Steve, what have you been watching? Oh, it's not even in there now. It's disappeared. It's disappeared. Let, let's right, just, let me know. We'll, we'll right, let me go to it. It's movie database. So, I'm going to talk about one movie actually because um, this will go back to our last Halloween podcast that we did, which is still pinned on my Twitter at the moment. I want to see a film called Smile. Okay. Um, after witnessing a bizarre traumatic incident involving a patient, a psychiatric psychiatrist, if you can say, becomes increasingly convinced she's being threatened by an uncanny entity. Jump scares in this movie, I kid you not, I jumped and swore. I don't often do jump scares, really, you know. Um, I really enjoyed it for what it was. I know some people don't like movies if they've got jump scares in it, because it's like, oh, whatever. But this um, psychiatric... Um, psychopath therapist if it's the right way to pronounce it with my mouth on it <clears throat> she witnesses a um, a girl commit suicide in front of her and at the time she's doing it she's smiling and she's convinced that this entity is after her and she looks into the story of her story which takes her back to other events on other people that have killed themselves mm-hmm. I, I, I enjoyed this movie. Um, I'm going to put this up there with it because my second movie, I'll talk about in a minute, was probably. <laughs> I wish I hadn't. Well, I, I did want to watch it, but, you know, I won't get it back. But anyway, but this movie, I saw this on, I think I saw it on Paramount Plus. So if you've got that, you can sit and watch it. Um, quickly, and I, I don't know, when did we last talk? Probably a little while ago. Um, yeah, let me just quickly about the other one. So, one of your favourite movies that I watched the other day called Nope. Um, as much as I love the director and what he's done with his movies, this movie was a bit of a weird one. It was blooming awful, that's what it was. And I got I, halfway through and I couldn't watch anymore. I was just wondering where this movie was going to go. I mean, I love Get Out. That was a fantastic movie. And this one... Um, no, actually, my missus, she said, that sucks. And after watching Smile about a day later, she's that such a good, such a better, refreshing movie. Um, <clears throat> and then the third movie I've seen, I watched, was Scream 6. Oh, I watched that as well. I thoroughly enjoyed that. Um, it was nice that they carried on the story from the last one with, with the same characters, Gina Otega's in it, for example, mm. with her sister on that. <clears throat> um, it was nice to see back, um, if I can remember her name, from Heroes, Hayden Panettiere. Hayden Panettiere, yeah. yeah. She looked much older now. I think she de- she definitely, definitely grown up. Did. Yeah. Um, had you figured out who it was pretty quickly? I had my inklings actually. Because yeah. Because I'm thinking, you know, I thought there's going to be more than um, I, there's going to be, you know, an abundance of, of people running around with the with the with the, with the ghost mask on. Yeah. It, to be honest, some parts of that actually felt very original, screamish, in the in the way that the dialogue was. Mm. I mean, obviously, you know, they've 
got rid of Sydney now. Yeah. She wasn't in it. Um, I doubt that she'll probably return to that, I would have thought, unless they kill her off. I think that the, the next time we'll see her, they'll kill her off in it, sure. Yeah, yeah. If they, if they go down the route of doing another one, you know. Yeah. Um, but I did like I did like the intro to the start of it. Mm. Interestingly enough, this went slightly different, and we had that woman in the bar. Yeah. Samantha, we- Samantha Weaving. She, I think she's great. I love her. She's brilliant. Mm. Um, she came to a grisly end in the in the uh, alleyway. But that even track. that had a twist to it, and I really liked that. That it was yeah. uh, it was different. Mm. So thoroughly enjoyed that that movie. You know, so there's been some good films just of late. Unfortunately, no, didn't tickle the boxes. As much as I was fascinated by the um, the alien creature as well, it was. If you don't know, yeah, no, I'd it was, figured out. It was of... sitting there in the cloud, waving itself like a. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I just got halfway through and I thought I know why this is called this because you watch it and you go nope and you switch it off. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and by the way, my... you said about me about the director. I have no problem with Jonathan Peel. I have yeah. no problem with He's him at all. He's done some good stuff. I mean, but that film, I mean, left a sour taste, I think, in a lot of people's mouth. Yeah, I mean, it's still it's another thing to see. I mean, I really need to see Evil Dead Rise um, at some point, which is the next in the Evil Dead series. Yeah, that's on at the Everyman in North Allerton, actually. Yeah, I really want to see that. Um, yeah, um, at the moment... That's about it. I think I can't think of anything else I'm really wanting to, to watch at the moment. I mean, the film's coming out, as we know, we've got, say, we've got Mission Impossible, which I'm looking forward to. That I see on the big screen and The Flash as well. Yeah. Um, and come October, there'll be Saw 10 as well. Or Saw Rex, as it's known. Yeah. But yeah, I'd recommend Scream 6. I, I thoroughly enjoyed that. I think Jenny Ortega at the moment, she's really on a bit of a high with what she's doing. I think she's really um oh yeah she's one of the actresses of the hour she is the in actress at the moment yeah and uh as i say she'll be doing plenty more things i'm sure and she is 24 she she she, she, she looks 15 but she's she 24 does. i know and <clears throat> i mean she did ever so well with with um the Adam family spin-off you know. Yeah, the the only thing I I, I didn't like um, but, uh, the the Morticia or Gomez. Um, yeah, yeah. The, the, yeah. Especially Gomez, he was so miscast. Mm. He wasn't suave enough for Gomez. No. Go, you know, it's like when you look at the original Adams Family Gomez, and you look at the one from the movies you know the adam mm. family and adam family values yeah both of those played gomez absolutely brilliantly both of those actors mm. him he was just there he just didn't he didn't didn't do it for me as mm. gomez and uh catherine zeta jones as morticia no did, didn't work yeah. for me. no no um, um. <clears throat> but yeah, yeah, she's really doing well. There's another film she's in actually that I, I've been. I just realised I just went through a, a list of movies of recent. There's a film called X that I've been wanting to see mm-hmm. about um, a group of filmmakers set out to make an adult film in rural Texas, but when their reclusive elderly hosts catch them in the act, the cast find themselves fighting for their lives. It's sort of set in 1979, so a little bit. I don't know Texas Chainsaw Massacre to a certain degree. Um, but yeah, that's another film. I, it's on my hit list to watch at some point. I think it's sitting around on one of the channels. I'm not sure if it's on Prime or somewhere. Mm. But definitely looks good. I'm, I'm interested to see that. So, anyway, what about yourself? What have you been watching? Uh, well, I've been I've been watching loads actually. So, first one I'm going to talk about is something that's on Apple TV, which is Silo. Uh, this is. Uh, another post-apocalyptic sort of uh, sci-fi show where everybody in the world is now living in this uh, great big hole in the ground, basically, in this silo. Yeah. And the outside above ground is scorched earth. Um, There is 
they've been living in there for over a hundred years and a lot of years ago there was some sort of uprising of people wanting to leave the silo mm. um and what uh, what happened was in the uprising all of the information about why they're in there how long they have to stay and everything gets lost yeah yeah uh so you're now at a generation where nobody knows the history of why they are where they are mm. um and everything's started started to break down you know like the main generator uh, is breaking down and all the technology from pre you know before the the um this you know this revolution that they had in the silo um all of that gets uh, outlawed and then the sheriff dies and then this engineer from like the, one of the bottom levels mm. then uh, the sheriff says she has to be the new engineer because she'll sort out this riddle sort of thing um and that's the basic premise of the story um and i'm really enjoying it you know and so if it, and people do leave the silo but when they do they only manage to walk about 20 meters and then they'll die Mm. And then everybody can see them on, you know, from the windows uh, that look out on the on that land, you know, on the, the the surface or on screens to show where the dead bodies are. So it's, uh, you know, very sort of like dark kind of premise, but it's uh, it's on Apple TV and it's really good, really, very good. Uh, I've really enjoyed it. The next show, again, is on Apple TV. I've been watching, which is I watched season two of the morning uh, of uh, the morning show. Mm -hmm. So this is um, Steve Carell and Jennifer Aniston and Reese Witherspoon um, in a um, program. I'm trying to remember what it was called. Like you remember the Gary Shandling show? No, remind back, me. Uh, where it was about a TV. It was about uh, a a guy who uh was ha had a had a chat show on american tv but it was all about what happened in the background rather than seeing the tv program mm. do you remember it i think i do yeah 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 well the the morning show is basically that but with jennifer aniston uh no, and not, Steve not Carell. no no definitely not <laughs> definitely not <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, I'm so not gutted that he's finally <laughs> off the TV. Um, another story for another day. Go and carry another, on. Yeah, another story for another day. Um, much like the truth in this case. But in terms of uh, the morning show, it's it's really interesting, kind of uh, the way that they've done it, and they've also done this with the pandemic as well. So that like the show, the rise of COVID and how that impacts on the show and stuff like that. And it and they're uh, halfway through the pandemic or the opening of the pandemic. Um, and then, uh, you know, that's when the se season ends sort of mm -hmm. thing. But it, it's been really good. I hope that they do another series of that because I would like to see what else happens in that, uh, that kind of universe. Uh, other shows that I've been watching as well. I've been continuing to watch Ted Lasso. I absolutely love Ted Lasso. It's uh, mm. it's brilliant. Mm. And another series on Apple that I've been watching is The Big Door Prize. Okay. So uh, The Big Door Prize has uh, Chris O'Dowd from the It Crowd. Yeah. Um, and uh, basically he's living in America and this machine appears in this convenience store and then people go in it and you know put the hand on this thing tell them the details and then it says to them what their ultimate career should be mm. and then people suddenly start changing their lives to become to do what this uh, this thing does and uh the first season's ended but they've set it up for season two because at the end of the season, the machine says, do you want to now go to the next level sort of thing? So I'm looking forward to that uh, coming on again. I've, I've really enjoyed that. 
yeah. and another one on Apple TV. So these are all Apple TV records. Yeah, I don't, I don't have that privilege, but yeah, go carry on. Yeah, is Hello Tomorrow. Mm. Uh, so the uh, guy who is on the morning show, uh, Billy uh, Crudup, I think his name is, uh, he is uh, like a a salesman in this retro future so everything is sort of like 1950s america mm. but they have hovering cars and jetpacks and they can go to Back you to know <laughs> uh, yeah it's very kind of like very much like that but the cars don't have wheels at all and just hover mm. um and you know they have like drones that will walk the dogs and people live on the moon and stuff like that and he's selling um, accommodation for people to go and live on the moon mm. uh, and it's about him doing this role mm. uh, with these other people and uh, do you remember the nerd guy from Friends who was uh, going out with Phoebe and then he went away to invent nuclear fusion or whatever can't remember well he's no, on I didn't I didn't watch Friends that much right. And also, it's uh, got the, uh, I forgot what her name is, um, the woman who was on Star Trek Picard season one and two who became the Borg Queen. Yeah. Yeah, she's on it as well, um, you know, as a disgruntled customer, as mm -hmm. it were, because she, she buys her ticket to go and live on the moon and have this luxury... Uh, place after leaving a husband and then gets told well you won't be coming up to the moon for the next six months and she was like no I want to go immediately sort of thing and then the flights keep getting cancelled and stuff like that and you know the company gets into trouble and you find out all sorts of stuff but it's really it's really good but mm. it's like really done in this like real 1950s future retro mm. Uh, it's quite fascinating to, to to see the way that they adapted the technology, but I really quite enjoyed that. It was uh, it was a good show. So there's a few on Apple TV because I know that people say there's not a lot on there. What I'm really hoping for though is that um, on Apple TV that they get uh, for all mankind season four mm. because I've really enjoyed season one to three. Uh, of that so that's about this alternate space race where the russians beat the americans to the moon so anyway i don't have anything else to talk about do you no, uh, i would just okay. say i've just looked up x is on prime to view on prime video so i will watch that movie okay i'll have a look at that then yeah all right in um, that case <clears throat> we'll move on to our listener questions john what's happening to us All right, listener questions. And Mark has uh, sent in a couple of questions for us to kick off with. So his first question, and by the way, Mark, I hope that you're doing and you and your mm. family better now as well. Uh, don't forget, we're always here if you uh, need us. So Mark's first question is, what is your take on remakes? Do you like remasters or 10 to 15 year old games or think that the developer resources will be better placed on new original titles? Depends. If there's a game that the public adore that much and with the console generations changing for how, how to play a game, the look, the feel, the speed, and everything else, all that wonders, all that goodness we get out of our next generation console. I think, why not? Mm. You know, we've had games over the years, we've had, where we still get Series X updates and PlayStation 5 updates for games to push them a bit more with the console yeah. we've got and give them, I think, no problem with that at all. And we've had quite a few over the years. I mean, some of our favourite games, like Mass Effect, did have a big push and resurgence, mm -hmm. didn't it? Bioshock, they got remastered. Um, and there's other games in your list, if you just go down in, and you will see that there's Series X updates to give them, give them that nice look. Um, and it doesn't take a lot, possibly, to do that. I mean, if you're doing a proper remaster, they did one for Alan Wake, but I thoroughly 
I thoroughly enjoyed seeing that come out. Yeah. You know, what about yourself? Do you, if, even though you do play, you do play a lot of retro games. Would you say you're happy to see remasters? You know, or do you feel that they should put there? I'm I'm happy to see remasters. Uh, what what I don't like is the remasters that come quite quickly. Um, so you know, so it's like where it's like a year later, and because mm. there's a new console, they're charging you full price for the same game. You know, it's like the the this generation is probably the first time <coughs> where um, the remasters that have happened of uh, games from the previous generation have either been mm. free or been you know at minimal cost as it were so yeah. uh for example the um the uncharted 4 remaster mm. oh well, it wasn't a remaster but you know the the tarting up of the didn't of they tie game. it up twice though didn't they, they no no you talk you you're thinking of uh the last of us mm. No, didn't they? Did they brought out the collection for the Uncharted? And they tried it. They tied up the collection. Yeah, but the collection, they, they brought out the Uncharted collection, and then they brought out the update, didn't they? But the the it didn't have four in. But in terms of the update that they did to four, uh, mm. you also got the uh, the cheaper uh, game that was on the Uncharted, the one that didn't start Nathan Drake mm. three with it if you got the update and i'd already played through and sold that game so it was quite nice to get that back mm. but with the ps5 bells and whistles um you know I, I do like the fact that for some of the older games have gone back and done an it's it's not really a remaster it's more like a polish of the original game but yeah. when you look at the, you know, like some of the remasters of older games where by remaster, it basically means they've kept everything exactly the same. They've just made it work on the next generation console. Um, sometimes they've worked, sometimes they haven't. They've been a bit more hit and miss. Uh, but in terms of the complete remakes, I really mm. love Final Fantasy VII Remake. Yeah. Um. And I think that there's been one or two other ones that have been really good as well. well so, the Witcher did have a did have a couple of banging updates, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, it did. And obviously, we've got the next gen update mm. on that now as well, with ray tracing and everything as well. And then, obviously, I know it's not your favourite game, but Cyberpunk has been. Yeah, do you mean still, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah? Looking yeah. forward to the DLC that's coming out. Yeah, yeah. Um, that one's had well that one just had updates to make it work for a start off but you know it's, yeah, been a, yeah. it's been a long development cycle as that and it's it's strange how cd project red have gone from such a great game with the witcher in terms of you know how that worked and everything to a game that was so poor but it's now a great game though that's the thing it's a yeah. really shame i think people should look at it if they yeah. haven't got a like a grand theft auto style game you know they're missing something at the moment well, no, a first-person think... Grand Theft Auto game. Yeah, I know you can yeah. play a first-person in Grand Theft Auto yeah. now, but... I mean, that, you know... <clears throat> so there's plenty... I think there's some more things coming from them, you know, coming up. But, yeah, and then we're moving on now. We've had the remaster for Alan Wake. We've got Alan Wake 2 coming out at some point. Yeah. Um, who was it? I can't remember who did it was mentioned that they were saying... Was it Alan Wake 2 that was going to be really digitally only? Not on yes, disc? it is. It's only digitally. To keep the price down? Which I don't think is a bad thing. I know some people might say, I want to pay that on disc and I can check, go and trade it into CX at a nice price. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. If, if you were, were given the option mm. of buying Alan Wake 2 mm. for £50 for the digital or mm. £60 for the physical, which would mm. you go for? Depends, really. If I, 
if it was a game I enjoyed to keep, then I would probably should have gone digitally. But if it's a game you're going to play once and throw it back, you get your money back or a part of the money back from that mm. disc, even though you're paying another ten ten pound or ten dollars extra. But would you not, if it's a game that you want to keep, would mm. you not want to keep an original version of it anyway? You see, I, it's funny, but my my discs are, are getting slimmer and slimmer on the shelf now. Mm. Never thought I'd ever say that. Um, it's just the way it is, isn't it? Where music, I still prefer not to be digital. I still prefer music not to be digital as well because I'd, I'd rather have a and movies. Uh, well, as we we mentioned before, movies, yeah. movies, and that whether it's CDs, vinyl, Blu-ray discs, or whatever, it's yours. It's not licensed to somewhere on the, on the screen. Yeah, but I, th- I think I mean you still have my Vinyl's yeah. very different. Vinyl's a very different issue Basically, altogether. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but a C, would would you prefer to have a CD or the tracks on MP3? I prefer the CD. I think. So if if you were to buy a CD for fifteen quid, mm. or you could have the digital only version of MP3 in high quality for eight quid no i i i think even even having something digitally it can be lost you can lose it in some shape or frame look at alan wake alan wake they yeah the game was taken off because of the licensing on the music on it that game went away for a while mm. i had a copy anyway um then it came back obviously they remastered it and all that music still there i mean on the pc you just don't get no. original games anymore. I mean, I've, so, got plenty of, I've got digital movies coming out of my ears and I picked them up from Apple in, in the day, you know, certain movies. But, you know, when you, you know, when you got this in your hand, it's like, okay, if you, if you, got, if you lose your internet in your house... Still play your music. I can still play music. Mm. I can still watch a movie. And I, I'll always think that just... The other thing as well, the other reason why I think owning a digital movie to owning a disc movie is a different thing is because Sky, when you look at a Sky HD signal, is not as good as a Blu-ray HD signal. You get better definition off a Blu-ray. And the same goes with 4K as well. It's funny, I was watching... So we watched The Kingsman. I don't know if I didn't mention it. We watched The Kingsman last night. That looked pretty looked fun. Mm. Um, then I started watching the first Kingsman, actually, just off the back of it. But later on in the evening, I just, for some reason, I put Jaws on. And I was just sitting in the lounge off of Sky, where I could come in here and watch it in 4K. Um, but there's grain to it. Mm. I'm not sure if there's grain on the disc, I remember now, but some films do have that. Uh, well, th- this is one this is one of the issues that uh, there is about 4k movies is do you have because, grain or not yeah because grain at the end of the day i mean to be fair if you watch the documentary on jaws on how they clean the print up that was painstaking and the same thing for star trek when they found all those prints of the original series in that warehouse and then they decide to clean that up in the same way and then they also had the Give you the digital effects to improve it <clears throat> it looks immaculate i mean when, when you look at star trek the director's cut that in 4k that's one of the most beautiful films you can watch in 4k mm. um it's you know especially with i'm, I'm, guessing... I'm so familiar with that film in hd mm. and it's just like I'm so familiar with it in, yeah. in, in DVD because I still got me DVD yeah. of it when it came out years ago. Yeah, but I mean, I have, that, that is next yeah. gen. And I haven't, of... and obviously, I'm, <sighs> CG has its place in movies. I'm going to go well for tank me if I don't. I'm, I've got to eat at some point. Um, CGI has its place in movies, and it, sometimes it doesn't have its place in movies. So when, you, when you're going to see a film like Avatar, The Way of the Water, whatever it is, you've seen that um 
you say the CG looks amazing, but it's CG, so it will look amazing. Obviously, yeah. the imagery is what makes it look amazing. And when you see that come out on Blu-ray in a few months' time, seeing it's a three-disc, I think it's a three-disc for it. Uh, yeah, I, th- I think the thing is with that film, I would have rather that they spent a little bit more time in terms of making it an actually engaging story and less time on the CG. Yeah, yeah. and where I can look at another movie that I don't mind, that a lot of people hate, and the story is a bit lackluster, and one of the characters, they say she didn't really put out the bag, and it was Valerium. Um, I don't mind that movie, actually. Visually, it's stunning. It really yeah. is. The aliens and everything else. Story, maybe not so much. Um, and the actor, actress um, that played in it, you know, she weren't up to scratch, apparently. But I, it's, it's up to yourselves and like what you think about it. But, for, you know, 4K and not 4K and fake, well, fake 4K. Depends how they go with it, you know. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, it's just rambling now. Okay, do you want to do the next this next question? Yeah, it was this one for me, was it? Yeah. Okay. So Mark was saying, are you happy to have a game continue for many years by adding updates, expansions and DLC? Are full blown sequels better? Is it a lazy development? It's not a lazy development. It is. It isn't because it's an online game that progresses in time. It's getting the size of it on the servers. It's getting new. We're talking about Destiny here, aren't we? But no. <laughs> so, I, yeah, well, I know I know what you're talking about, Steve. <laughs> um, and if we were to have a new game every year that was called 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, you know, with a console break and an upgrading machine, for example, between a first game which can only run at a certain point, so therefore that's why they made Destiny 2. And I'm happy for that sort of, that that criteria sits right for that game. Probably not, every, probably the same for what for, um, we mentioned earlier, you know, when we talk about online gaming. I mean, right, Star Trek probably, that's how that one works. And also um, World of Warcraft. Yeah. It's, well, a, it's it, a different it, beast. It is a, a very much cheaper model than the uh, World of Warcraft or the Star Trek Online oh, yeah, but, model. But Bungie development is huge for that, for that game. Mm. Let's, not, let's not kid ourselves. The amount of people that work on those games in advance, they're already working on probably the next expansion and obviously probably the Cade and Weather. They're already doing that and they keep, they're doing updates, they're tweaking it because not the game crashes or... <clears throat> They find a couple of exploits last week, so they decided to tweak and we got another update. People were farming, you know. It's what it is. That is it. It's it you know, Bethesda, you know, wait we'll wait. We'll wait till Starfield comes out before you have your rant. And um you will probably say that I can't get into my spaceship because the door's closed, I can't walk I'm stuck in it and going That's probably because I will be. Yeah, <laughs> you are, not anyone else. Um yeah, I I seriously hope that but that, that uh, like Bethesda's game is good. So looking forward. To that. Uh, yeah, I I mean if it if it lives up to the premise, I think it'll be amazing. But Bethesda, uh, whether or not forgetting about the fact that when they finally fix a game, it, you know it's t- you know it, it's a very look popular how, yeah, game. Look how, how Bungie work compared to, to Bethesda, because Bethesda. I'm putting updates all the time. But well, they would do an update. They would see something's not right. But they, they have will, to, they will, they they have to take, do that take, because they're yeah, broken. They're take, yeah, but they'll take a piece of armour because it's for some reason it didn't like it and it's exploited. But then they'll do the other thing on the, on the flip side. There's a gut. Was it the Prometheus lens that had a had a bit of a laugh in it and they, let, they thought, you know, this is just breaking everything. Let them, let them play with it. And they left it. They left it. Didn't they? Right. So not Bethesda then, Bungie. You mean. Bungie, sorry, yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah, because Bethesda, you know, get to the point of product testing and then say, right, okay, let's get all of the users to product test. That's their problem. And but it the always thing has is, though, been. But they have, this was supposed to come out now, 
wasn't it? I think somewhere around there. Wasn't it? Earlier, no, much earlier, probably February. I know they've got another six months on it because they weren't happy with it. So they are being a good developer by doing that. They know Let's we want to. So. We're, 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 the proof will be in the pudding and I hope be. it is a good game you know I'll be installing it as soon as it's available on Game Pass I will install it I will play it because it'll be a day one on Game Pass yeah it's Microsoft it's owned by Microsoft so <coughs> yeah. um we'll, we'll just not, have to say, wait and see whether that's the story I heard where people will be trading in their PS5 for an Xbox because they want to play it I don't know <laughs> no I can't see that happening to be Xbox honest a joke on there. um, um but I I kind of like have a bit of a different view to you, obviously, Steve, uh, because I've sort of stepped away from that Destiny thing now. I, yeah, I have got Lightfall. I've played it twice. And I've just been, both times have been, oh, I can't be bothered with this grind. I want to do different things. I don't want to be made to go and do the Trials of Osiris or go and do a raid or... Don't go and do bounties or what you know whatever it is that the train or multiplayer crucible really don't want to play a crucible but i have to because i have to get this bit in this quest so i can move this bit on i hate that i've always hated that i don't, um, think, I don't think in this last one you have to do the, do the crucible so well no I, it's, it's so you just, didn't even jump on with me just to have a bit of a fun to see where your problems lie my game. problem lies in the whole of the basic way that Destiny operates. Well, you, I think, I think, I think it's better that you play retro games than play Bungie. You're much right. happier. You're much happier there in that environment. I'm, I'm happier playing for a variety of different games rather than mm. the same thing over and over again. Yeah. And that's not that's not criticizing anybody. Or anything, we all like different things. Some people look at retro games I don't, and go, yeah, I hate I don't, retro games. I, you know, if I if I had the if I had the money to do it and pick up a PS5, there's probably some games in there I could play that I can't play on the Xbox. A lot of games you can't play on the Xbox, yeah. Yeah, but I do like story. I do like story-driven games, and PlayStation do well with that. Yeah, they do. They do. Um, I've still got something to plan. I mean, you know, you can get like Forbidden West and play it on your Pro. Well, I've played that. I've got, I own that. No, Forbidden West. Oh, sorry, what, the, the DLC? No, no, sorry, the no. new game. Oh, that, sorry, okay. Oh, the new that, game, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, You know, most of the games that have been released still are also on the Pro. Yeah. So you could play those. Except for Final Fantasy, is that still going that way or not? They say I can't remember off. if Final Fantasy was on. Which is a shame because yeah. you've got the, I've got the first part, but the second part is only going to go on PlayStation. Do you, do you mean Crisis Car? No, what about Final Fantasy? Yeah, that is Final the Fantasy. Remake, the remake. The, the reboot. Re- I, I don't, it's a, what's the reboot or the remake? I can't remember. The remake the of Final Fantasy VII. Final yeah. Fantasy VII. I've got the first part. Right. I don't know what they're doing about the second part because that's second not. Second part is is it only on the PS5. I don't know. Which is I don't know. Because it's not fair. Well, I mean, do you know what I mean? If that is the case, that is the the actual <laughs> second part because the first the, the second one in the Final Fantasy VII was Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core, which was a prequel. Well, I don't care about I've, that. I've, I've literally, literally, I would carry. I would have played Final Fantasy VII as I know. Love. Yeah, well, I've I've literally yeah. just picked up Crisis Core today. Yeah. Um. So I'm gonna be installing that and playing that over the next few days because I've got a few days off. Mm. Um. But yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I I, I like full blown sequels. Uh, I'm looking forward to Alan Wake too. As, as for me, it's got to be a good game and. I don't want it, you know, good narrative, and I don't want it to have uh, very repetitive. Oh, we all love, we love, we love franchises, and you're going to get that, and you get repetitiveness in franchises to a certain degree, anyway, because yeah, keep that, and let the story be different, but it'd be still the backbone is still the same, whether it's Mass Effect or anything, even though. Well, I mean, I'm a great Assassin's Creed fan. I didn't like 
Valhalla. I've not played Valhalla. I, yeah, I don't like Valhalla mm. because I just think that the whole uh, environment is depressing. It, you know that that uh, you know era, fifteenth century Earth or whatever mm. uh, England. I just did not like it, and it doesn't feel a flaw. Near, the leveling up seems to be very slow in comparison to other games. And, you know, that you're surrounded by areas where if you walk into them, you're going to be virtually instant death. I just mm. don't like, I just I just found that game to be annoying. Uh, whereas Assassin's Creed Odyssey, I've completed that twice to mm. 100%. Mm. You know, Platinum 1000, whatever it is, Gamer Score. I've done a lot on both of that. That's like 200 hours gaming. Mm. And, I've, and I'm on the PC version and I'm playing that one as well. So, you know, I'm, I'm a big Assassin's Creed fan. I've completed Origins. I did a complete Syndicate. I couldn't get on with that one. I did. Yeah, I couldn't. I, I don't know what it was. I just, I, I just, I didn't, you know, and the only other one I haven't completed was Rogue. No, I haven't. No. That's but I, I played that it? quite a bit. Yeah, that, that was on the... the original consoles when it went yeah. you know when that, was, did, that was that was the taster for them because they're not getting that yeah remember rightly yeah it was when when we got unity on the xbox one mm. the original consoles got rogue but then the original yeah. the, the new consoles also got rogue as well so yeah i think it all depends on the game um but expansions are all right i used to like destiny in the expansions but i just got sick of it in the end well it's a shame because the story is really good. Yeah. Uh, now that's gone. And then so, that will link with Cade as well, I think, from what I, I can work out. But. It's it's when to start also incorporating all of the mechanics into it. Of You've got to stand on this plate and you've got to, you know, when you turn this colour, you've then got to start jumping on these invisible steps and then shoot at, you know, this great big face that's in the middle of the screen. But that's just the core mechanics of a game. So it's, but it's they, not do, they do change. I mean, right. For example, at the moment we're we're underwater. At the moment we're, in, we're yeah. underwater, capturing globes of air to get to a point where we get out of the water and we're fighting and we're doing this and we're doing that. You well, know, these but... are raid mechanics, which I know are integral to the raid. But things like you know the uh, the vault of glass with the jumping. I mean, we used to sit there and laugh our heads oh, off. Oh yeah, you yeah. trying to jump. My wallet wasn't the best. I must admit then. <laughs> Yeah, no, but, I mean, I, I, we used to take the mick out of you. I used to get forward, doing yeah. that. I know, I know. Yeah. But, I mean, <clears throat> yeah, it is what it is. I mean, it's not for you anymore, it's not for you. That's that's fine, it's your prerogative. Yeah. So. Uh, anyway. And also, it's quite nice going back to some of the old games as well. Yeah. Anyway, uh, next question is from Paul Wilson. Uh, who's down as top contributor so he's, he's a, Paul's a very good supporter for the show uh, so as there are any films or games that ha- have left you feeling genuinely scared or mentally disturbed by or to the point that you've not been able to continue watching or playing I've put games down because I had to make a decision in a game and I physically had to put the game down I've not been, I mean, I can play through a scared game. I'm, I'm sure Paul will, will talk about Resident Evil. And I was probably shitless to a certain degree in that game. Um, but I think, I think Fable was any game that actually, was it Fable or was it something else? I think it was a COD where I had to put it down and think about it before I did it. it oh, was it that moral choice? one mm, yeah 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 i think that was i think i did i think i had to put it down for favor as well i think I, there was something to do with your dog and i i actually had to think well hold on a minute i have to walk away from it and think about it but from a horror perspective i just eat it up anyway if i'm scared and i get jumps i don't mind that I, I i think i i feed off of it in games whether it's alan wake or resident evil or whatever, any other, you know, type of horror genre that, you know, zombies and, you know, whatever. It's, yeah. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I've never been, I would say, that genuinely 
disturbed by a game or a movie. I, oh, yeah, I, yeah. I would say that the, the one movie that has really genuinely disturbed me when I watched it, and it was more because of the premise of the film rather than the film itself, mm. was Believe It not, or Not Terminator. Because that, <clears throat> when that came out in the 80s, was when we first started talking about the singularity and AI and stuff like that. And it was, it just kind of like, I don't know, it was just something that engaged me with the whole notion that one day machines could take us over, sort yeah. of thing, and try and destroy, yeah, our creations try and destroy us. That had that had a, a big impact. But other than that, I've been sort of like quite passive about it because uh, I've been repulsed by a game, uh, and that was homeland and that was where a guy gets brayed in the brains by a hammer and it was just mm. sort of like that felt unnecessary but it wasn't scared of the movie of the yeah. game oh he knows i mean i i've, I've had nightmares over a movie but when i was 15 when i saw the exorcist not that like, just had a nightmare i had a reagan sitting into my bed and freaked me right out yeah you know, watching her sitting there, you know, did my But, yeah, interesting. Mm. Okay, should we move to Scott Kidd then? Um, yeah. Conspiracy theorists and the rise of TikTok, do you think there are, are links? Some believe in a digital ID and social scoring coming and 15 minute neighbourhood. I'm not sure what the 15 minute neighborhood, but in terms of social scoring, I think we've already got that because that's why when you do a internet search and you, you know, look for a lawnmower and then suddenly you go on to Amazon and it's selling your lawnmowers. Or even when you talk about it. Yeah, exactly. Well, which is really creepy because that microphone is telling them something, isn't it? Yeah, of course it is. Yeah. So in, in terms of that, but in terms of the rise of TikTok linked to, uh, uh, th conspiracy theorists definitely not because cons th conspiracy theorists have been here well 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 before i mean the chi um, the chuck because the, the chinese and government were saying that they were saying that they, you, you weren't allowed to have TikTok on your phones weren't you and stuff like that I think. yeah i mean we we know from like the whole brexit debate and the cambridge analytica and the targeting of uh sort of like on the fence sort of people because they made the the leaving of brexit that was that wasn't a thing about is are we better off in the eu or not it was a thing about xenophobia and fear of mm. uh people from other countries that's what it was about that's what the battle that they fought but that wasn't the battle about what it was about it was about whether or not mm. we were economically better in europe mm. and i you know i think it just brought out the evil side and you know they were targeting people it's been proven that that was the case you know there's documentaries on netflix about it and stuff like that and that's what i think is wrong i mean mm. in terms of you know i i actually quite find conspiracy theories to be really interesting um and it's like uh, i don't know if you've ever heard of him but i watch a guy called creaky blinder no uh, he's a YouTuber and what he does is he uh, does humorous videos about uh, people who do conspiracy theories such as, mm. uh, you know, man never went to the moon and flat earthers and uh, also oh, Karen's yeah, and yeah, suffering maybe, for example, Yeah, Jeff K, all, all of that sort of, you watch his channel, Creaky Planet. I mean, then yeah. you've got, you got Mexico and you've got the uh, alien scenario, I suppose, you know. Yeah, all, all he does all of that sort of stuff, but he he, he tends to specialise in like flat earthers and stuff like that. And mm. I've I've all, to me flat earthers is something I, I I'm fascinated with, not because I believe in a flat earth, because I don't. We we are on a globe floating through space. We know that. We've, we've got we, we know that. that. We, yeah, we know that. You can go in a hot air balloon high enough, and you can start to see the curvature of the Earth. Mm. No, I'm, I'm not on. I don't believe in in what flat earthers do but what gets me is the fact that in this day and age anybody believes that when it can be proved 
Do you know what I mean? I I know that Australia is there. I don't need to go there to be proven that it's there. Do you know I'd what like, I mean? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to go there. I'd like yeah. to go there, yeah. I'd like to go to the moon, but I don't need to go there to mm. prove that it is a real place and that man has walked on there. Yeah, you know, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Uh, because the opposite of if it was a cover-up is just so ludicrous. Mm. And they couldn't keep it covered up for so long with all those millions of people who would have been involved with it over the years. Mm. It's just utterly, utterly ludicrous. And I just find conspiracy theories to be really quite interesting how people can skew off and take, you know, uh, take something and twist it. You know, I don't know mm. what his name is, but Ike, whatever he is, you know, the, you know, there's like, uh, of gods, uh, is it of gods and men? Something like that. There's a book that's by a famous conspiracy theorist which I read years ago. Uh, and like all this about ancient aliens and all of that. I, I just find the whole topic really fascinating. Mm. Uh, but more in terms of the why the hell do people think these things rather than believing them? Mm. Okay. So, right, okay. <coughs> Jason Toon, last one. So, so. With Tekken 8, Street Fighter 6 and Mortal Kombat 1 on the horizon, are there any other fighting games you'd like to uh, receive another instalment? He said he'd like Soul Calibur, personally. Um, I'd like... I'd have to look and see if I can find it, which one it was. Oh, by the way, I'd just um, Assassin's Creed Mirage is on Xbox for pre-order. Yeah. Out in October. Um, and their the deluxe edition compared to the is a difference of four and four pounds. For for forty forty nine ninety nine for the deluxe and forty four ninety nine for the standard. Mm. And it's still interesting. Not eighty or seventy quid. Yeah, well it's uh, sort of like supposed to be cut down from Assassin's Creed Origins. Yeah. Um I need to go to my games, don't I? The one... Um, well, my games, there we go. See all. Are you oh. thinking of Injustice? Yeah. I really enjoyed playing as Wonder Woman and Superman. <laughs> I bet <laughs> Not, you did. <laughs> I love it. No, it was such a good game. And there was Injustice 2 as well, if I remember rightly. Yeah, of God's, that was of Gods and Men, wasn't it? I think it was. Um... I do have more the latest Mortal Kombat as well, mm. where you're playing as I think Terminator and stuff like that. I think it was you do as well. You can go in there to make your characters. And that was a bit of fun. But I'm crap. I'm crap online. I just play story mode. You know. Yeah. Well, then, are you up for like, is fighting games your your niche or not? They can be. It can be. I used to be a big uh, Tekken and Dead or Alive player. I'd like mm. to see a new Dead or Alive game. Well, yeah, I bet you do. Yeah, where I'm 99 years old. Uh, I, to, be, to be fair, I used to actually quite enjoy them as games. Um, I The uh, Tekken, definitely interesting playing. I'm going to go really old school in terms of a game I'd like to see brought up to date how about international karate sorry i haven't got a skew with you what that one is to be fair. it was on the commodore 64 oh well there you go that's probably why i don't know yeah uh and it was uh it was out at the same time as mortal kombat as well mm. uh but uh yeah ik uh plus where uh that was the first time you would do like normal karate fighting but you would have like two adversaries on it you at the same time Mm. Uh, that'd be quite interesting to see brought up to date. Anybody remember that? Let us know. Mm. So yeah, so there's a there's another couple, but I I really do want to get one of these Pandora boxes, which are like the arcade machines, but in a, a box with, right. a, with a couple of lots of sticks on, uh, yeah. and then have me and my son play some like proper old vintage retro arcade machine games. See, that's your niche, the old school. 
it's becoming that way, yeah. It's becoming seriously, that way. But... It's, it's seriously a problem. <laughs> <laughs> but I I play modern games and I play... Old. I know you do, I know you do, but you really do love retro, yeah? More so. I think if we stop making games all together, you'll be happy because you'll be just playing those retro ones and you'll love it. You'll be like a pig in doo Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But just because it's old doesn't mean it's knackered. No, I know, no, I know. Exactly. And that's the same for movies. I tell my missus that. Well, watching mm. a film that's 20 years old. Yeah, but it's a good film. I'll, I'll tell you what. My son loves older movies. Last night, we watched They Live. Yes. And he did. absolutely loved that. Movie. Did he get it? Yeah, he, it's com- very... he completely got it. it. It took him a while to get the premise and he was asking questions. He was saying, why, mm. why, is, why is this? Why is that? And I was explaining it to him. Mm. Uh, and then it was bit so I'll, I'll, you'll find that out in a minute. Just keep watching, mm. sort of thing. But yeah, he absolutely loved that. And you know, we've sat and watched uh, Escape from New York. He then mm. wanted to see Escape from LA, which he actually enjoyed as well. Um, but yeah, he likes that whole thing. So you know, I've said, oh, you need to watch some more John Carpenter. So next week we're going to watch the thing. I think. Oh, okay. How is he? If he's old enough, uh, he's uh, nearly 16. It's a 15, isn't it? I mean, that's an 18, isn't it? Is it? We might not watch the thing then. <laughs> Hold on. Let me have a look. It's an 18. I'm looking at it. Uh, okay. He won't be watching so, that one then. Prince of Darkness is a 15. Yeah, I could watch that. What's the fog? The fog is a 15. Yeah. Uh, yeah, those are the main ones. And Taking the Yorks of 15 as well. I'm not really sure why that uh, the thing is an 18, to be honest. Well, it's not that it's, bad. The practical effects are pretty. Yeah. But when you actually look, it, this is interesting, right? Total recall. Actually, get him to watch the. I know, I, I know it's not great. It's, it might, for later, get him to watch the prequel. Is that a 15? Um, I will tell you because it's in this box set. I don't know why it was in here. No, it's an eighteen. <clears throat> so I've got got my box set underneath the underneath the desk. Yeah, it's an eighteen. 15. It's a fifteen. Oh, it says eighteen on my box. Look. Oh, I'll watch a prequel then. Just to, just to give him. So when he gets to see the axe in the door, you will know why yeah. the axe is there. Yeah, because, I mean, he's watched Big Trouble in Little China. Yeah. And he loved that. Um, he has actually seen Total Recall, and the reason why I, I let him watch that is because, although it says 18 well, on, it on my 18, box, isn't it? Uh, well, uh, Sky started showing it as a 15. Okay. Sky had a 15, so if it's been reclassified, because let's face it, it's not scary. Mm. You know, the, the most disgusting bit is where there's a guy with, you know, what's his name? Well, it, the, bit, the, the baby the bit, coming out of his bit, stomach. The, well, that and then the um, crashing your helmet on the, on the rocks in Mars and your eyeballs popping out. Yeah, but you don't see people exploding or anything. No, like but the eyes, all the eyes are just coming yeah. kind, of, kind of out of your eyeballs. Yeah. That, that really takes out one of my kids. He came downstairs. He was about nine or ten, and he come down when that was on. And he, yeah, freaked him out. Mm. Oh. Anyway. Can we... Um, yeah, I think let's, uh, let's uh, call it a day. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the show. Steve, do you want to give your sign-off in terms of so, your socials? Yeah, best place for me is Twitter at Steve007. Uh, PSN is the real Steve007. Xbox is 07. My Instagram, I'm not even sure that is anymore. I've forgotten all of a sudden. Uh, YouTube channels are Vinyl Cues. And there is an Instagram page, but it's probably on my it's probably on my on my Twitter feed anyway. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, so for me it's H E R J UK on PSN, Xbox Live, Steam, Twitter, you name it, it's on there. Apart from Epic, in which case it's Pop Culture Gamers. Uh, don't forget, we have our YouTube channel, which has got had quite a lot of content added recently. 
So youtube.com forward slash pop culture gamers. If you're already watching the podcast version of the show, well done. We like that. Let us know if you're uh, still enjoying it. Um, if you're listening to the show in podcast, you can watch it as a podcast. And you can see some of the games that we're playing as well mm. uh, in there. So uh, please do um, do show that. Uh, have a look at that. And don't forget to like and subscribe because only about so like 90% of the people who watch the channel are not subscribers. Mm. Um, yeah, my, my, actually my Instagram is the Viacues as well. There you go. Oh, there you go. I thought it was the same. Um, don't forget we also have a Facebook group and we have a Facebook page. Uh, so you can also uh, check out things on there as well. And also our website, Anchor. So it's not Anchor FM now, is it? It's uh, um, Spotify. Uh, so you will now find us on Spotify because Anchor has gone and it's now just Spotify podcasts. So we're on there as well. So hope you've enjoyed the show. Uh, thanks for joining me, Steve. And it's a good night from me. And a good night from him. Good night. Good night.